It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. Great panel today. Nick Bilton from The Times. Uh, from All Things Digital, Liz Gaines. Of course, Ben Parr from Mashable and my good buddy, Brian Brushwood. We're going to talk about uh, why Apple should buy Sprint. Uh, our favorite Kickstarter projects. And what was the other one? <laughs> it's all coming up on Twix. <laughs> You're going to love it. Just watch, will you? Please, just watch. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by the new Winamp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one-click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full-length CD listening parties. Download it for free at winamp.com slash Android. Video bandwidth for Twit is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 318, recorded September 11th, 2011. Screw you, darling. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Carbonite Online Backup. Automatic and unlimited backup for your computer files with anytime, anywhere access. For a free trial plus two free months with purchase, visit Carbonite.com and use the offer code TWIT. And by Audible.com. Sign up for the Platinum Plan and get two free books. Go to Audible.com slash TWIT2. And don't forget to follow Audible on Twitter. User ID Audible underscore com. And by Go to My PC. Accessing files on your work computer while at home or traveling is a hassle. There's an easier way with Go to My PC. For your free 30-day trial, visit GoToMyPC.com and use the offer code TWIT. It's time for TWIT This Week in Tech, the show that covers the weekly tech news and a great panel assembled on this September 11th, 2011, starting with Liz Gaines from uh, AllThingsD.com. Nice to see you, Liz. I know Liz's dad. That's how old I'm getting in the business. Stu Gaines, good friend, old friend, and uh, really nice. You know, I didn't realize you were related. I, you had the same last name. And, uh, and I saw you at uh, food camp. You said, no, he's my dad. I went, wow. And, you know, kind of coincidence, because I'm Ben Parr's dad. <laughs> Daddy? <laughs> Daddy? I am your son. No, no, that's wrong. Uh, ben Parr from Mashable, great to have you. I'm glad to be on. Well, it's good to have you in studio. It makes it such a big difference to be able to sit right next to you. I love that. Of course, Brian Brushwood's also with us. We're trying to convince Brian, and we got his wife to come up here, and that was a good sneaky thing Brian to do, wasn't to it? to seduce her to the dark trying side. Trying to get her up here and get you with her up here, because it's so nice to have you in studio. Well, for what it's worth, she loved Petaluma. Good. If that counts for And you're up doing scam school? Is that what? Yeah, shooting scam school tomorrow. In fact, if you guys want to come out on Monday and, um, uh, yeah, doing scam school. We also did Come shows. where? Where, where? I don't Some bar. Know. Some, somewhere in Oakland. Check the Twitter feed, uh, at Schwood. So you oh, can okay. Come out and join You'll us. tweet it. You'll tweet it. And from the, so Brian is with NSFW, too, on our network, as well yeah, as Scam School. Yeah, dude, we're on the front page of iTunes right now. I with saw the that. live Dragon Con show that That's we did. That's fantastic. Was that was an amazing show. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. If, you, if you ever wanted to see a dance-off between Link and the Red Skull, this is your one time to finally get to see it. And if you don't know what that is, you should start watching NSFW <laughs> a lot more, because uh, those kind of social... Uh, Commentaries show up a lot. You need to know. You need to get with the memes. Yes. Get with oh the gosh. memes. Yeah. Also here, Nick Bilton, who is a meme all of his own from the New York Times. Good to see you, Nick. Thank you very much. Uh, relocated from New York. Were you in New York during 9/11? I was there. It was 20 blocks uh, north, north, south, north of. I actually watched the whole thing happen. Does this strike you? It seems to me <clears throat> that people who lived on the East Coast have a very different kind of feeling about 9/11 than we on the West. Uh, it was it was pretty insane. I actually um, I I was was reading a lot of books about Afghanistan at the time and so I knew oh. a lot about bin Laden and everything and so when it happened I kind of had an idea that that was what was going on and I was um, I'd actually just moved back to the city that day I was in Jersey for the summer like living in a beach house it was post bubble so right. went were, you had, were you a student at the time or no I was uh, um, I was worked for some dot coms and made a little mm. bit of money and then and then wasted it all away skydiving <laughs> and traveling and, but you were one of them yeah, I was one of those guys uh, <laughs> you were a bubble boy <laughs> I was a bubble, well I wasn't like a big bubble boy I was a little bubble boy that's cool though. 
<laughs> That's great. I honor you for that. Thank you, you very were much. A bubble babe. <laughs> I was a bubble babe. Um, and so I came back to the city um, on uh, September 10th. And actually, my girlfriend at the time and I had made plans to meet at Windows on the World on September 11th at oh 7 o'clock. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. And that morning, woke up, and <clears throat> um, I used to skydive a lot back then. And so I remember looking up at the sky and being like, wow, today would be a great day to go skydiving because it was like per crystal very, clear. very, very yeah. clear and, and blue. And then watch the planes hit and then watch the... So you, you saw it all happen live, yeah. live. Yeah. Wow. wow. Now, no. uh, how quick do you realize that that's not an accident when you're actually there? Um, instantly, just because I know a lot about planes and, and I'd been reading about bin Laden and all this stuff was going on. So you probably more than any, quicker than anybody realized it was a terrorist Well, the, attack. two days earlier, there was, a, um, there was a, a guy in Afghanistan who used to fight the Taliban and was, um, he'd been killed two days earlier by bin Laden. And there was like a lot of stuff online about, well, online back then it was a different story. But there was a lot of discussions about what was going to happen. Um, and so knew pretty quickly that what was going hmm. on. You knew better though than a lot of the news because I think a lot of the news. Well, a lot of the news. I remember were, watching it's the, an accident. It's the, an accident. the talking heads like, oh well, the the aviation equipment must have been wrong. The aviation equipment is not wrong. Not on these that planes. wrong. Right. Yeah, not um, that wrong. Because we were talking about before they had um, they had a couple planes like they had these crash landing. Even one like uh, one of those small planes had hit like a World Trade Center maybe in the last yeah. year before. So people were wondering like, is that um, what's going on? Is this right. just another accident? Then the second plane hit. Then everybody knew. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was pretty. Uh, it was pretty pretty insane to watch it all unfold. You know, there's so much, of course, every network's doing their 911 remembrance and all that stuff. So I don't, we don't necessarily need to go great in, <clears throat> into it. But there, but there are some uh, tech angles. Uh, YouTube has a 911 uh, channel, which I think is is uh, quite good. There, this this is one way to experience 911. Uh, and I think you know, there's a whole generation of kids who you know either dimly remember it or don't remember it. And for them, um, this is a great archive. And that's one thing we have to remember is that uh, as, as uh, you know, media progresses, this stuff goes hyper-recorded. Oh, absolutely. This I mean, is pre-YouTube, <clears throat> pre-Twitter, pre-Facebook, and yet we have a lot of video. And the, a lot the, of the thing that I think is fascinating is, yeah, this was, this was pre-smartphone, you know. Right. But um, imagine if it happened today. I it'd mean, be a very different. It would be a. Yeah. It would be a very, very different um, media experience. Archive.org, which is uh, Brewster Kale's really wonderful <laughs> uh, group, they're archiving the entire internet, but they also have a, a television news archive that they made with NYU called Understanding 9/11. Oh, really? Um, that is uh -huh. different than the YouTube. It's a little more scholarly, frankly. Um, there's a lot of different information here. It, this it is seemed like uh, YouTube was trying to tell the stories. You got a lot of almost documentary style uh, footage of people telling their experience. I mean, it was very moving. I poked around on that last night. Whereas, uh, as the Internet Archive tends to do, they're looking to just preserve the, the essence, the facts of what happened. Right. And there's a lot of it. But as you say, Nick, it would be so different today. <clears throat> uh, yeah. let God. God willing, we won't have something like that happen again, but uh, uh, history tells us anything. We know there will be some other thing like this that we will be recording, whether it's a tsunami, an earthquake, or a terrorist attack, and it will be so different. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the one thing I do remember, I, I, I retweeted Jim, um, uh, the, the editor of the NYTimes.com earlier, who, who showed the front page of the New York Times that day, and I remember uh, that was one of the first times that I actually used the web for, right. for breaking news. And right. I mean, everything went down. The Times, they had to pull the logo off the website because it was just couldn't handle the well, traffic. And, and this was also one of the first stories <laughs> where we figured out that voice communications over cell phones were unreliable Not reliable. And disasters. Mm -hmm. but, Not reliable. But the texts mm -hmm. would actually go through. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Harry McCracken wrote a, a good article today on the Technologizer. Uh, not only his memories, and by the way, Jeff Jarvis also on, on his buzzmachine.com, really great post. But on technologies that have changed, and we mentioned, um, you know, Facebook and YouTube, but we didn't have 3G wireless. The iPod was uh, released Windows XP the next was month. after? XP was later. Xbox wow. was later. Wow. Not Xbox 360, Xbox. WordPress, Skype. Uh, ThinkPads, Firefox, Gmail. I mean, the w 10 years is a long time in technology. I think you'd pick, you know, any event 10 years ago, you'd have the same kind of list. But, but it's still, it's something to remember that we are in a very different world. His list of, and you liked this one, uh, Ben, I know, of top 10 sites August 2001 compared to top 10 sites uh, this year. Yeah, you, you look in the past, there was, what, GeoCities? Number Neo one was MSN. Which is... <laughs> Number two was Yahoo. I'm more amazed by Neopets. I know. Oh, Neopets, was really? that popular? It's funny. Oh, well, my daughter, uh, who, let's see, 10 years ago was nine, wow. was a huge Neopets user. We were just talking about that. My daughter had 20 accounts. 
um, I, I asked her, I remember at the time, I said, honey, now you know that some of the people on Neopets, Neopets was like a virtual pet site. Uh, and she had a Psy Bunny and a bunch of other things like that. And I said, now, honey, you understand that some of these people on the site are not kids playing with virtual pets, but adults preying on kids. Because remember, we thought this was a oh, big thing. Of course, thing. yeah. And she said, oh, don't worry, Dad, because in my profile I say I'm a 32-year-old guy from New Jersey who drives a Camaro. No <laughs> way. That's that a smart awesome. Girl. That's when I stopped smart. worrying about my daughter. Aww. Uh, Goto.com. Oh, I don't even remember Go what that was. Goto. Uh, that was ABC's venture. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. AOLGo.com. The ghost will buy That's guess, still go, ABC. Yeah, ghost will so pop it. Like oh, no, ESP Go 2 is different? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Because like, Ghost still around because ESPN.go.com is still right. what happens when you Which go is to so stupid. Yeah, agreed. Excuse me. You're ABC. You're ESPN. Have a site, for Christ's sake. <laughs> yeah. Go.com? Uh, Passport.com? Um, is that uh, Microsoft's was pass Passport? Oh, maybe. Must have been their single sign. Excite? Oh, Excite. I remember. Oh. Psychos. Then Joe Kraus found aliens and left. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and GeoCities. GeoCities. Now, of course, Google, Facebook, Yahoo, YouTube, Bing, Wikipedia, MSN is still in the top ten, the only one. Wait, what's and the, Yahoo, yeah, what? Bing. Yahoo. Yahoo. Yeah. Face what? Face what? In fact, what Yahoo's the only one that hasn't changed much. Yeah. That's interesting. Yahoo. Well, well, Yahoo's oh, yeah. changed. Oh, changed. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe not its rankings, but everything else has changed. Mm. But that just shows you that Yahoo is somehow still a val Excite. valuable company. .com. What happened to Excite.com? It still there? Who you owns it? it? I, I just know. went to Neopets.com. I feel like it's like through a time machine. I don't back to <laughs> Neopets is still there. Yeah, this is like games or something. Yeah, it's a kids game. Did uh -huh. you play in Neopets, Liz? You were about that age. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like it's a gaming set. It's no longer about virtual pets so much, I guess. Isn't that the one where you buy the physical one and play virtually? No, that is, what is that? That's to get the stuffed animal and yeah, then you get the website. That wasn't Neopets. You're talking about the Webkins? Webkins. Yeah, no, <laughs> Somebody has a child here. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Did I tip my hand? All about Webkins. Well, Neopets was the Webkins of the... Uh... So do you want to know a little, a little New York Times fact? Yeah. So the, uh, the headline for U.S. attacked the day after 9-11 was uh, one of the, the, the biggest, there's a typo, the typography size is, is a big deal with the history of the paper. How, how big the how headline big the, was. The headlines are. <clears throat> but the biggest headline ever, um, see if you can guess what it was, what news event. The biggest one the Times has ever run across the On the, top. Uh, on the print? Uh, when print. man walked on the moon. Coolidge what, wins. World no. War II. What, what? Era. What decade? It's, uh, it was actually the last decade. Lady oh. Gaga is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Gaga was pregnant. That was, that was it. Yeah. What? <laughs> it was uh, it was one one zero zero. It was the uh, the the millennium. Oh. oh. They yeah, had time to back. set that. But one up. U.S. attacked. I, I believe is like the second or third l largest they've ever run across do, the headline. Did, did anyone else? Do you remember that weird phase after 9/11 when nobody wanted to? You just Google image search it. You'll you'll see it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'd like to find that headline. So if I image search uh, U.S. attacked, I could find it. U.S. attacked MI Times, and then yeah. if you go to images, they actually they're right next to each other. Let's see. Let's see that uh, headline. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and there's men walked on, and there's one one zero zero. Yep. There you go. Hmm. And this man, was pretty big. Yeah, that was pretty big. But different, different size paper back then. It was like this big. <laughs> read it. But then the New York Post had something like what? Some some profanity like "Damn you!" What did the Post have? I can't remember. I'm trying to remember That's a good the question. Uh, you, well, like we could I probably find that thanks to Google. New York Post 9/11. I like doing my research Can live. Can you imagine how much fun it would be to be a New York Post headline writer? What I was going to say is, is uh, there was this, you know, everything is obviously very somber right afterwards, but I remember this breath of fresh air, like, I think it was two weeks, uh, they took a week Act off of war, when the, the Onion line. came back. Oh, and, really? And they were the first to, to really, um, uh, to really, I, I don't know, release the tension yeah, by, by putting their satirical take Washington on it. Was, yeah. Was, it was okay because they yes. did it so well. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's like, it was, a, it a, was very soon, though. I mean, it was, it, it was, was, it was week two weeks after. afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they took a week off. And then um, uh, there was, uh, you know, they had a, a press conference given by God asking which of these Ten Commandments do you not understand? And uh, Bat Boy uh, safe after a well. WTC attack. <laughs> 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 U.S. vows to defend whoever it is we're at war, <laughs> to defeat whoever it is we're at war with. Um, yeah, it's it, it, hijackers surprised to find selves in hell. That was that was one where it was funny, but it also at the same time kind of felt good. It was like, okay, good.
You know, this is this is a this is one way to make a joke about it that is okay, I guess. And it took so, quite a while. Like I remember Daily Show was like several months until they got back on. I remember like I I watched that YouTube maybe less than a week ago, like when John Stewart was back on and it's like it's like it, it's it's a little bit gut wrenching. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Um, all right. Well, that's our tribute to uh, to uh, 911, and let's not, of course, forget the people who uh, uh, lost their lives in the attacks, and also the uh, amazing uh, uh, New York City Fire Department, Police Department, who really Absolutely. leapt into action. Uh, many of whom also lost their lives in the collapse of the buildings. NBC's Twitter account uh, was hacked by Script Kitties uh, this week. Ah, uh, script kitty. Even mm. maybe, right? Uh, Didn't the person who hacked it claim responsibility? Maybe not using the person who hacked its Twitter. Oh, handle? how interesting! Well, so, you never know. So here's a, here's the here are the four relevant tweets. NBC. First of all, their, notice their logo changed a little bit. Breaking news: Ground Zero's just been attacked. That's horrible, frankly. Yeah. Uh, that kind I, of that kind of sick sick, sick humor. Uh, and then another one with the NBC News logo restored. And then this is not a joke. Um, and then finally, NBC News hacked by the script kitties followed them at S underscore kitties. Yeah, which is fairly stupid because... Uh, what did they expect to have happen? They were, you know, Twitter's like, oh, that's fine. Just keep that account. Yeah. Enjoy those followers. I imagine the subpoenas flew you, fast and furious. crazy kids. Yeah, the yeah. FBI started the FBI's on it. Immediately. And, and, of course, all the FBI has to do is... is subpoena Twitter and they'll release that information. I mean, I get wanting to hack <clears throat> NBC or whatever, the man, but why the hell would you want to say that? I mean, I it's don't understand just what the... sick. But I think this is what we kind of are starting to realize about uh, LulzSec yeah. and Anonymous and uh, now the Komodo hacker, which is just, this guy is, uh, his manifesto is, uh, is, is twisted and perverted and bizarre, is that these people are can maybe not exactly normal. Yes. Um, there, there's something going on more than, I mean, obviously they have mad skills. Well, I don't even know if that's the case because a lot of security experts said that the, the guys behind Lulzek, the only person that really knew what he was doing was Sabu, the guy that ran it. Everyone else was essentially just... Do you think that this guy that they arrested is... Topiary? Yeah. yeah. Is Topiary? Uh, yeah, I believe so. He's um, the he's the kid they arrested in Britain. He's the kid that they arrested in, in the north of England and, um, and actually a, a very creative writer, very funny. Uh, just which Topiary in, was? Which he very, very yeah, but just got him with the wrong group of kids. Yeah, um, and maybe not a hacker himself, just uh, their communications czar. Correct. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't know much about. But we don't know if Sabu has been. Sabu's still tweeting away, and he's there. You know, he's All still right. doing his thing, and um, uh, so as far as we know. But I wrote a story about um, the the uh, who who they were a few months ago, and Sabu was really smart about hiding his tracks many mm. many years ago. Uh, before he actually even got into this stuff, so there, there, there are, is a wide range of skill among hackers, and there are, well, the script kiddies, of course, at the lowest level, they're people who don't really even know what they're doing. They're right. using scripting tools that are created by more sophisticated hackers, and 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 there's a lot of that going on, obviously. Um, but then there are people who are very skilled, and those mm -hmm. are the ones who are scary. And a lot of those guys actually work in the security industry. Um, and thank uh, God. Yes? Well, no, I mean... They're bad guys in the security? They're bad guys and good oh. guys. Yeah, there's yeah, the, the, the bad guys. There's also the bad guys that get caught and then they become good guys. <clears throat> there's yeah. a good number of those. Now. But then there are also good people no. posing as good guys who are bad guys? So there's gray hats, white hats, and black hats. Right. Um, and the worst part is the gray hats now that have, have risen to fame um, are doing it for just for the fun of it. Uh, whereas the white hats, they want to get some notoriety and the black hats want to make money. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason for the gray hats. And so, so. like at the black hat, uh, the security conferences, you can actually, um, the uh, U.S. government's recruiting a lot more yep. as they're trying to get uh, people to help them defend because, you know, don't want to have, I mean, the, the, this is like, I mean, NBC, Twitter hacked is small compared to what a really good hacker could really do. And we've seen well, what they, they, they haven't, they could do some really, really just terrible things. Let's, let's talk about Komodo Hacker because this is the guy who first hacked Komodo and their security certificates and most recently uh, hacked um, DigiNotar, which is a certificate authority based in um, uh, Holland. Uh, and by doing so, issued certificates for a lot of sites, including Google. Um, those Google certificates were used by Iranian, the Iranian government to hack hundreds of Gmail accounts, maybe thousands of Gmail accounts in Iran, looking for dissidents. Um, but this, but this guy, Komodo hacker. In fact, let me see if I can find his paste bin because it's, he, you know, he's, he's published a manifesto um, that's uh, 
kind kind of amazing. Let me see if I can. Uh... Well, that's the uh, uh, that's something certainly over the last couple of years you've noticed a trend of. Uh, it's almost as though hackers are trying to package themselves. They're they're interested in branding in a way that that you certainly didn't see five ten years ago. <laughs> branding. I like how you're putting that. <laughs> it's a social media strategy. Actually, we're looking to uh, improve the. So he calls himself. Uh, look at this one. This is in his uh, second response. Do you know the meaning of unstoppable genius digital hacker? That's what he's calling himself. He says he's 21 years old. And uh, he's just getting started. He's not associated with the Iranian government. He just gave them the certificates. Um, he did embarrass, I think, embarrass some people in this. Uh, for instance, he showed a password, uh, administrative password that he'd hacked that was kind of trivially weak at uh, Digi Notar. Um, he also says it should be added in the Wikipedia article for SSL that I removed SSL or CA's certificate model and now he has a better way which someday he'll tell us about uh, the, just the imagine the I mean the the ego and the uh, and yet now what we don't know is this could be disinformation it could have been the Iranian government that did the hacking um, but I, I have to say reading this it feels like there is somebody this is a person um, and a little well, let scary. us anger him quickly. Well, apparently we have because our site is now <laughs> offline and this yeah. show is uh, is over. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's been real, people. <laughs> good, good night. Let me see if I can find his other uh, his other paste bin. He's, he's you know he's got a, quite a few of these. Um, uh, let me show you the um, the password here. He, by the way, w one of the reasons this is credible is that he posted a, the uh, public key certificate for DigiNotar, which only a hacker would have had uh, access to. Uh, I signed Windows Calculator using Google Cert. <laughs> That's proof. Uh, very, very interesting. Um, I mean, this certainly is whoever sent this is is genuine, um, but uh, a little, just a little bit uh, creepy. Nothing much more to say here. I probably shouldn't have said anything at all. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of a lose-lose scenario, isn't it? Uh, I'm not gonna be. Is that the worst case you're giving them, uh, or the best the, case you're giving them, publicity? Let the win, huh? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna take a break. We got a great panel here, uh, and we are glad to be talking about the tech news with uh, Nick Bilton of the New York Times, Brian Brushwood of Scam School and NSFW, Ben Parr at Mashable, and uh, Liz Gaines of All Things D. We're gonna get, to get you to talk more, Liz. I'm not an expert on 9/11. We'll what? move on. What are you an expert on, Liz? We'll, we'll All get sorts you. of other stuff. Also, okay. <laughs> you want to talk about the ATT T-Mobile? How about let's talk about Carol Bartz and how much <laughs> and how much money she's getting for calling the Yahoo board doofuses? Maybe they're not. Dollars? Yeah, they just yeah, fourteen. Maybe they're not related. Correlation. <laughs> <laughs> but before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about go to mypc.com from the great folks at Citrix. Go to mypc is remote access done right. If you were going to take remote access and design it to make it easy for you to use, to make it fast, simple, and efficient. This is what you would come up with. Go to my PC. I'll give you some examples. First of all, 128-bit SSL, point to point. You could use it as really, if you're at an open Wi-Fi access spot, use your Go to my PC account uh, as a way to surf safely, for instance. All you have to do to install it, you don't need help with the IT department. It uses something called NAT traversal, so you don't have to open ports anywhere. You merely install it on your computer at work, Mac or PC or your computer at home, whichever computer you want to access, and then hit the road. There's a free Go to My PC app, free Go to My PC app for your iPad. It's kind of cool to be using your iPad accessing a Windows machine. It just feels wrong. <laughs> dirty. <laughs> dirty. Somehow. But it works. That's amazing. Um, Mac 2, uh, totally securely, totally quick, too. They have some very advanced technology that means that uh, it, it feels like you're there. You can run any program, access any network resource, of course, send and receive email work remotely, never go without files, programs, or email again. Here's how you try it free for 30 days. Visit gotomypc.com, click this orange try it free button, and you know, you could buy it, but you know, I, I like it if you try it free. I think it's a great thing. And then use the offer code TWIT, T-W-I-T, uh, when you sign up. 30 days for free. Uh, give it a shot. It is just fantastic. Works great on Lion, works great on uh, all versions of Windows. Uh, except Windows 95. Not so hot on that. You know what else is you can actually, it's not tied to just one computer. It's one computer at a time, but like I had it on my studio. So when I'm on the road, I can access the studio PC. Right. But then I dismantled my studio PC and I said, what if I need to get something on my office you just PC? just transfer the account. So I transfer the account over right. to the office. And then I used the studio PC when we were at Dragon Con to access the office. I should have mentioned that. It's very cool. Yeah. Were you using it at Dragon Con? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. 
That's awesome. Thank in fact, you. in fact, once I even uh, I accessed my studio remotely from a hotel room. We set up two iPhones. And, and using remote access, I had the studio call the Skype <laughs> on each of the iPhones, and then I live switched using VidBlaster through go to my PC from, and it actually looked better to everyone at home than it looked to me because I was seeing it. I had remotely. no idea you were doing that. Isn't that crazy? That's it was nuts. insane. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's that's a that's a great endorsement. Go to mypc.com. <laughs> Give it a try uh, today. So Carol Bartz, I just love this. She um, she's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Maybe not anymore, though. This might be the end of it. I hope well, that not. That be the last we hear of her. I mean, oh, famously foul-mouthed, uh, which is great. I kind of admire a CEO that says what she means and means what she says. Um, she hired, what was it, uh, 30 months ago, something like that, two and a half years ago, to uh, save Yahoo. Does he, first of all, does Yahoo need saving? Liz, what do you think? Yes. Definitely. <laughs> they've got, but they've got great properties. I mean, even, I'm always amazed because, I, you know, people will say, well, what about TV.com? I say, oh, Yahoo owns that. Or what about OMG.com? You ever look at OMG? OMG's huge. And, yeah, and Yahoo huge. Finance is still a very, very good tool, and Yahoo Sports is still very big. Like, and the Yahoo have, News homepage is still the, one of the biggest traffic drivers to most sites on the web. Well, and well, we just why. saw. I mean, that's why you should care. Yeah. About well, this, this, is I, a, this is a company that is that has valuable products. We just saw that list of top ten websites 10 years ago and today yahoo is one down and it was two then it's three now i mean it's still a strong site so why is it so hard for the board and i have to blame the board as much as i would blame oh, carol bartz for this mm. she called them doofuses <laughs> <laughs> violating i think her disparagement yes. clause which may cost her some money because apparently it's a 14 million dollar termination fee wow uh, yeah no she yeah she got um i think I, I think probably what happened. So she resigned from. She didn't resign from the board when she was fired. She, so she was. So here's the deal. The chairman of the board is going on an airplane one way. She's going on an airplane another way. So, you know, some people said, "Oh, that's so cold to fire her on the phone." Is but this, it, this is metaphor. Or this is real life. This is real. Okay. This is a metaphor is and real life. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to do it by phone. He was reading from a script. He calls her up. Sir Carol, you're fired. You ignorant slut, and go away. <laughs> <laughs> It said that on the script. I saw it. It was an old Saturday Night Live yeah, script, as a matter of fact. You're supposed to read a legal script. Instead, you're just reading old Saturday Night Live. Look, it's, yeah. No, and, uh, and, uh, and of course, so she immediately... Now, this mistake number one. First, you call the IT guy and say, turn off the email. Then you call Carol. Not the other way around. Mm -hmm. So she gets one last email out, a little shot from... Sent from her iPad, which I thought was kind of cute, saying, they just fired me by phone. Uh, which I think is, you know, it's a little bit of a shot, let's face it. Uh, but she's still on the board. There's some ambiguity in there, at least in the interview that she gave, that she was kind of given an option of how do you want to word this. So she... But uh, but it all fell apart Earth. before then. Yeah. <laughs> was apparently her preferred So in the idea. script it said, now, Carol, let's come up with a story. Exactly. And she... But see, that's not Carol Bartz, yeah, is no. it? No. Story shmori. Um, do you think that she is at fault or is the Yahoo board at fault? I mean, I have to say, I, she was given a very tough task to figure out how to take all these disparate but valuable pieces and sew them in. Delicious, terrible, flicker, ignored. I mean, the things, things languished for yeah. under her care. Well, I think that her, her, the, them languishing shows that what Yahoo did not need was someone to be blustery and boost morale. That was not going to fix everything, because that's what she tried to do. But she didn't try to do a lot of other things. That's very superficial to say, well, let's get the morale up. Mm. You get the morale up by giving each of these talented divisions uh, the the respect they deserve. Yeah, but and with all, I mean, when you talk about Flickr and, um, and Delicious, they weren't money making. You know, no, I'm sure Flickr that, is a huge drain. They're, they're brands that that I think in our world they they you know they're seen as affluent and exciting. But you know, well, but, but stuff, couldn't you go to uh, let's say Google and say, hey, would you like to buy this Flickr division? Because this is got oh, absolutely. Some value. That's what they should have. They should have spun them off. They should have you know put some resources behind them, not just threaten to shut them down. And the things that I as geeks and maybe you as geeks would. Think about like Boss, build your own search mm -hmm. engine, which was a really cool thing. Yahoo Pipes, yeah, there were they had some great programmers Amazing making programs. great products. Of course, only geeks knew about those products. But they've done some of that. I mean, they spun off Hadoop, right? Like they're tur they turned some of their core technology innovations Just not into enough, something I guess. worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I I guess. I don't know. I hate that line about you have to decide who you are. Are you a media company? Well, or are you an ad company? Or are you a technology well, but, company, but, but I think it, it kind of comes into that. Where yeah, I think, I there think, really is not a lot of 
leadership shown in any of those. Well, that's the thing. I don't think they need saving. I think they need a direction, and, yes. and they don't have one. They and need a director, right? Well, well, yeah, you need a director to pick a direction. Director with a direction, yeah. Right. The director doesn't matter if the train goes 15 different ways. And the, and the problem is Yahoo can't seem to decide what it wants to be, and, and that's what's so bizarre about this flirtation that they're doing with AOL. It's like if you got two, there's oh. and I was talking to Justin Robert Young about this earlier today, if, if, there's never been a case where two aimless, amorphous blobs of companies <laughs> ever <laughs> mashed up and then suddenly had a direction. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. Oh, let's, let's be clear. Yahoo is not flirting with them. Maybe Armstrong was thinking, oh, maybe I can try again at the very, very most. But Yahoo is never going to, like, seriously consider merging with AOL. It makes no and sense. I think Kara all. said in All Things D, she yeah. said, never, no way, no how. And I've, if Kara says that, I believe her. She went, she yeah. said, was very, very, very the, clear. I, I think in the end with it, it's just, you, you they needed, they, they put in somebody to make, find more efficiencies in the system. Bart's is not a visionary leader. She's an efficiency. She got it made Autodesk efficient, so they thought right. she could do the same thing for Yahoo. What they kind of really needed is someone with more vision that can set a direction. The problem was when they tried that last time, that was with Jerry Yang, the uh, co-founder. And he, um, while we all, like in Silicon Valley, love having co-founders as CEOs, he didn't succeed. He couldn't do it either. He su didn't succeed either. I think, I think where Yahoo really started to mess up was when they shut down Brickhouse. And so if you look at the people that were there that were running it, you've got Chad Dickerson, who's now the CEO of um, Etsy. You've got Bradley, Bradley Horowitz, who's running all the product at Google. Wow. He, he mm. built Google+. Plus. He did Buzz. He's done... He's running Gmail. I mean, these are Katarina really, fake. Katarina fake. Oh. So what um, was Brickhouse? That was a uh, Brickhouse was in, in but the city. They never really believed in that. I don't think. Yeah. Go it ahead was like a research it lab, and there was a hundred people, and they they were responsible for. You know, you had Daniel Raffle, who who uh, has his own startup now. You had all these people that were. Um, That's where pipes talented. came from, by the way. That's where pipes came. Remember from. Fire Eagle? Yep. <laughs> oh my God. Yahoo's location thing. That I don't e couldn't even figure out why they did it. So well, the, that, was, that, that was exactly it, right? Yeah, it was why? like they took all the people inside the company who really would have rather been working at startups, yeah. and they put them into a building and said, pretend you're at a startup, yep. and then they didn't support any of their products. And then they shut it down in the end. Um, and, uh, in 2008, they shut it down. Yep. And since then, a lot of the people that were there have gone on to do pretty successful and amazing yeah, things. But I don't think that it was ever really working. Like It wasn't like a big, huge thing that they yep. uh, stopped believing in. It was just... Wasn't well, going it sounds like just this Pretty endless, nice. ever since Terry Semmel, who was Mr. Hollywood, ran it mm -hmm. uh, and built things like OMG, it sounds like this endless litany of failure. So when you, a the answer, I guess, to the question, who's to blame uh, Carol Bartz of the board, it's, every it's, well, yes, it's all of the above, right? I mean, the board is, is a bunch of doofuses. Somebody, I don't remember who, probably John C. Dvorak said they should just fire them all. <clears throat> well, I think the, the problem is that the company isn't looking at the long-term gains, they're looking at short-term gains, and, and if they don't see them instantly, then they shut something down. Right. Um, and uh, and then I don't think they're, I mean, I personally don't see them looking at the big picture of what, you know, two, two, two to five years from now. I, mean, I don't know what they can they're do at this impatient. point. They're too impatient. Yeah, they're way too impatient. Um, how, how long was Carol there for? I mean, it wasn't... January 2011, not 2009 to now that's just over two and a half years yeah and, uh, and from people i've spoken to within yahoo that the, there were not it was very difficult to make changes I because think of the that organizational some, structure if, if you have the stomach for it it would, could be a really great place to work right now i mean there's <laughs> i mean <laughs> really because there's, really? so, there's opportunity yeah i mean there's still yeah, so much to work with and, and i mean i was speaking yeah. this week with someone um who's working on their social efforts and they have like incredible opportunities to kind of socialize some of their media consumption experiences that you know Facebook could try to start to do that, but no one goes to Facebook to consume media yet, so they'd have to be starting from scratch. All right, you're in charge at Yahoo. What would you do? Come on, Liz. I want to give you a <laughs> she job. Dropped the I F -bomb. just gave. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. I got to work on my swearing Car vocabulary. Car Carol, interview <laughs> interview with uh, Fortune Magazine's Patty Sellers. Carol Bart says these people effed me over. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. The one th I, I I don't know though. I mean, I do have some sympathy for her in that they knew it wasn't working for a long time. Right. Like, what what? Why was this week so important? Why could they not have figured out anything before just dropping the bomb? Well, once they make that decision, like they they have to just like they can't like wait a week and like try to work it out. They did. I mean, well, they should have it, fired her a while ago. I mean, it wasn't no, working should, for a long time. Yeah, they should have. I think that's part of. So part who of the who who can? I mean, I I can't imagine. I heard the rumors this week that Yahoo. Uh, an AOL would get together and that's Armstrong not, run no. the whole thing. We know that's that, not true. That's, you know, I, I just can't, I don't know who can come in and... Who would have thought, though, here we would be talking about 
Yahoo and AOL, and that AOL would be in better shape in, in 2011 than Yahoo would be. That's uh, just bizarre. Well, I and think someone at AOL would, just wanted everyone to stop talking about TechCrunch. So right. they're like, oh, you know where the we'll big with Yahoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, that's a good idea. That uh, distracts everybody. It's a misdirection. You're a magician. You know how that works. <laughs> Pay no attention. Uh, actually, the big mistake was when uh, they turned down Microsoft, which offered thirty-one thirty-three dollars. Yeah. Was it? Yep, I remember that. They're currently Yahoo's worth less than fifteen dollars a share. If they had accepted Microsoft at thirty-three dollars, and they said, "Oh no, we're worth more than that," and they wouldn't take it. Crazy. I don't suppose. Uh, I don't suppose they're going to get a second chance on that one. Mm -hmm. I don't well, and, it's, and no. I don't think they're ever going to. They, they've lost so much positioning. They, I mean, they they were almost uh, synonymous with search for a while. I mean, and and to be honest, I still don't have a one word answer for what they are nowadays. And right, I mean, that's it's not search because because Microsoft does the search. It's Bing. Absolutely. I think Microsoft could come back in and get them on a fire sale. Do you think Microsoft still wants them? No. Nope. <laughs> in Here, fact, I got, Steve, I got the, Steve, they got the search deal. Steve Ballmer went. <laughs> Whoa, that was close. Uh, Bart, uh, in the interview, says that she wasn't given enough time. She said to Fortune, they want revenue growth, even though I told them there will be no revenue growth until 2012. The board was so spooked by being the worst, cast as the worst board in the country. Now they're not, they're trying to show them that they're not the doofuses that they are. Okay, so that's the disparagement right there is... is <laughs> her saying, because that, that was like a double negative, too. Well, that's the, that and calling them effers. Well, yes. <laughs> and, and I, I, don't, I don't know the exact intricacies of what's being argued over, but I think the whole payoff has a lot more to do with the fact that they fired her than whether or not she's on the board or right. not. Like, it was pretty clear she wasn't going to be on the board if she's been fired as CEO she, of the company. Yeah, she should not she, be on oh, the She board. said, in like, the, like, I'm going to stay on on the board. It's like, that's not going to She happen. said she plans she to stay on the board. She, she, she resigned on she Friday. Resigned. And I, think that was, I think they probably said, like, if you just resign and just kind of from the rest up. of the time, <laughs> we'll give you $14 million. So just please be quiet. Yeah, it's, good. it's a good deal for her. And uh, I don't know what they're going to do at this point. But uh, it's kind of sad. Yeah. I mean, this is a great company. with. A, it really depends who they put in the CEO. Who is there? If, 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 if Leo. <laughs> Beyond Leo and Mike Arrington. I could, I could run that company into the ground real quick. All right, Mike Arrington. Now we got to talk about yes. Mike Arrington. What is there to say about Mike Arrington? All right, Arrington? we're done. Let's move on. Mike, <laughs> uh, I think, Ben Parr, if you were thanking Carol Bartz for all the good text, I think you got to thank Mike Arrington. He's great. I think this is great. So, so uh, we, just to summarize... I can't even summarize. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is something we saw coming the day that AOL announced, the day that Mike Arrington goes on stage with Tim Armstrong and says, yeah, we're great buddies. We're going to, it's going to be great. You knew this was, this day was not far off. One Correct. year, almost to the day later. Yep. Uh, first, he, first he slams Engadget, which is Yahoo's number one prop, uh, yeah. property, uh, AOL's number one property, saying, you know, they're not journalists. I don't know what he said. It was ridiculous. Joshua Topolsky and Neil I. Patel leave shortly thereafter, rightly so. In fact, Topolsky tweeted, I am so glad I don't work for AOL right now, uh, just the other day. Uh, then what else happened? Uh, the, the memo, the AOL private you know, company memo that he released immediately, but you'd expect that. Oh, uh, yeah. He's independent. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I think that was that's probably good journalism. Um, but he was rattling the cage. It looked like he wanted to get out of there. And, of course, finally, uh, he starts the Crunch Fund, which is a $20 million venture fund that's designed to invest in the companies that TechCrunch covers. Now, AOL must have known this was coming because this is what TechCrunch was started to, to do. Right. So I, well, AOL invested in the fund. Yeah, and they, gave, and they put $10 million into the $20 million fund. So it's very confusing. But then Ariana Huffington, this is the problem. Ariana says, well, you can't let make me have this banner. Yes. You can't edit it. Yeah. Is, a new, is that a new voice for Leo? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Ariana Stosinopoulos. He says, no, darling, this man cannot edit up. Uh, he's, uh, he's a good So, and this is the problem. Actually, I feel sorry for Tim uh, Armstrong because he's got, on the one hand, two. he's got two very strong personalities. He's, he's, he's in a, a polygamous relationship with Arrington and Ariana. <laughs> and they're both shooting at each other, <laughs> and he's I in the want, middle. Yeah. I'd hate to be in his shoes right no. now. Well, so, okay, so number one, I assume that the, the, the problem, as it's being stated, is like, well, there's a conflict of interest, it's bad for the blog. But well, they fired Mike, then he quit. After the, I love that. <laughs> they fired him, then he quit. I love that. He said, well, I'm going to quit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they said, unless, and unless you fire, uh, I can't remember what he uh, said. It was, it was either unless you sell it back to us 
or you let us choose the next executive editor. Be full editor editorial chief. control. Full editorial control, which I respect. That's he says the deal all along was we would have full editorial control. And by the way, all his writers are standing by him. MG, uh, uh, Paul Carr, everybody's standing by him, uh, saying we want you know full editorial control. I don't blame him. Don't Is that possible as an AOL entity? Um, <clears throat> it depends how much input Ariana has. Um, she wants to run it. She wants to run it. She wants to run everything. She wants. She wants. She doesn't want. She doesn't want darling, to have this. It's mine, darling. It's, mine, it's all no, mine. She doesn't want to have this media organization. That's um, I, like she runs the media empire. That's what Tim basically gave to her, except for this one little one in the or well, one in the corner. That's not gonna fly. But that's what him. he said. He said we understand that TechCrunch is a different kind of journalistic entity. But what they can't. So they can't put TechCrunch within. AOL or within um, uh, within Huffington Post because it, it is so different. Right. Right? It's 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 an opinion. You know, it's right. like so <clears throat> they either give it full control or they move on. I've kind of changed my tune at first. And I'd be curious what you think, Nick, because the New York Times is famous for you're not allowed to uh, invest. You yep. know, I mean, the Times has its investment fund, by the way, which but, Mike pointed out. Yes. But it's completely separate. Completely separate. Um, I, I couldn't know. give you a dollar right now. Right. You want one? Five. Because <laughs> he'll say no. I'll give you a brick. <laughs> just tease it. I'll buy a brick. <laughs> but uh, the Times is famous for its editorial independence, and Correct. I still respect the Times for that, and I think that's a good thing. And as as a journalist, I thought this is the one thing we don't need. And you know, whenever you have a trade press, whether it's automobiles, stereo, the U.S. government, whenever you have a group covering a small group, there's always this kind of problem with getting no you know socializing getting them know inside the beltway journalism and uh, I, as a tech journalist I always feel like we have to be a way above uh, suspicion I mean it's really important because people I think assume that well your advertisers influence your coverage and uh, we can't we certainly wouldn't expect you to be independent and, uh, and objective and so we really want to so at first I was kind of offended by Mike's point of view but I've kind of kind of the other way it's like well it's tech crunch it was never intended to be Independent. It was Mike said at the beginning, the day one when he founded TechCrunch. I just want access to the deal flow. This is a blog that will give me access to the deal flow. Um, well, and there, there's uh, certainly there's a number of blogs out there, and I, I don't know if the landscape of journalism is is changing. Obviously, with with blogs in general, but is is anybody surprised that there's that there's hidden or not disclosed things? Well, I mean, this is the thing that bugs me that I don't like, which is that Arrington says, "Oh, everybody does it." Well, that's so. This that's is what bugs me. Okay, so I've been at the Times for eight years, and I start. I became a reporter two years ago, and made a lot of friends in the tech world in the six years before, because I worked at the research labs and, and did a lot of public speaking. And I remember when I first started reporting for the Bits blog, and um, and I'm not going to mention any names, but a, a good friend of mine um, started a startup and um, and gave it to um, Arrington and TechCrunch. And I called him up and I said, well, "What are you doing? Like, you know that I just started." And he said, "Look, it's nothing against you, but if I don't give it to Mike." Um, they're going to write a negative review if I don't give it to him first. And I, that, that happened over and over and over again. Um, <clears throat> and I don't necessarily think that's journalism. Uh, and and that's, that's where I have problems. There, there are things where he invests in funds and things like that that I have problems with. I think he's an, a brilliant guy. He made TechCrunch out of, literally out of thin air. Um, but to compare TechCrunch to other entities and to say, well, everyone's doing it, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. That's not fair. Well, so, if, in fact, he, you know, he's just, he points to Kara Swisher. Oh, you, Liz, you work with uh, saying, yeah, well, her... Yeah, he's his, calling her, me out as well. You too? Mm, yeah, what, what's your conflict of interest? Because Kara's okay. married to a Google executive. I, I'm also married <clears throat> to uh, a, a Stanford student who does... Well, how dare you? ...at Facebook, which is so, the company so, I cover closely. Okay. But, I mean, yeah, I, I and I don't like that conflict at all, and I actually probably would cover Facebook more closely right. if I weren't well, always worried about that. Kara, but po Kara pointed out, well, I'm look, you can only marry one worried. person, and it's <laughs> like, you know... Exactly, I mean, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, she's made her choice, and, yeah. and Kara, I mean, is does this weird dance to stay economically in, or financially independent from her partner. She really works hard at it. Yeah, yeah. No, I... Look, yeah, I mean, I, it, there are conflicts of interest everywhere. I mean, I think if, I'm, if I remember it. correctly, Mike was arguing when, when Mike Arrington was arguing with David Carr from The Times... Uh, he brought up an example of when the Times wrote about the Boston Red Sox and the Times company actually owns part of the Boston Red Sox. I mean, do, does every single article that, that um, everyone has something to do with... But the way that TechCrunch write is writes is different because TechCrunch writes, um, and a lot of blogs do now, and I do think I've, I've sensed this distinction of having moved now from GigaOM to All Things D where we're really much more careful about stating our own opinions. Techcrunch has an opinion in every article yes. you'll read. You'll say, I but think that's this, TechCrunch. That's why I love it. Which is why I love TechCrunch, right. which is why I love to read it because of that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
No, but it's I, it's but it's a much bigger journalistic question. This is not something that should be discussed just within the realm of technology and TechCrunch and the New York Times. I mean, it's the question of that I think is is actually going to come to a head much more now with everyone's on Twitter and all these journalists that are coming out of school that have this long history of you know I remember when I first started at the Times and um, uh, eight years ago and I was in a news meeting. And uh, I walked out and I said to one of my editors, I said, what do you think about X? And he was like, I don't have an opinion on that. And I was like, what do you mean? Of course you do. Of course like, you do. I'm a reporter. I don't have an opinion. Right. I was like, come on. I was right. like, you have an opinion. I was like, I know you don't have an opinion. But he really steadfastly said, I do not have an opinion. Um, and if you look at my Twitter feed, you can tell I like Mini Coopers or right. I like M&Ms or whatever it is. Does that mean I can't write about those things? Right. Because I, I, you know. Well, and I, I think the distinction <clears throat> is what voice do you, you know, if you want your entity to be a voice of, of perfect, uh, you know, uh, neutrality on all these issues, then yes, it is important. But well, that's that, was reporting. Never what, that was and, never what TechCrunch and, was and about. reporting, you know, I asked Jeff Jarvis, because he's a professor of journalism, I said, hey, is this recent? He said, yes, this happened when uh, we went from having four newspapers in a market, each representing a different point of view. You know, newspapers used to be very slanted. And when it came down to one newspaper in the market, it was decided by the journalistic nabobs that we should be objective. We, our reporting yeah. should be objective. There should be no point of view. It should be merely the facts. Let people decide. And that's relatively recent. That's within the last 70 years. Mm -hmm. um, so this idea of non-opinionated purely objective is is an artificial concept that I kind of like. Yep. It's not what we do here. I don't, it's, I don't think it, that conflicts of interest brought TechCrunch down. I think Mike Arrington's polarizing personality is making it agree. impossible yeah. for him to be a part He's of that picture. And I think agree. he'll do fine. Well, well, you know what? He was sick oh, of it. The reason TechCrunch was bought was because he went off stage with an interview with Tim Armstrong and said, I'm tired. And right. Tim Armstrong said, how would I take that off your hands? And yep. Now it's a year later. It's gotten worse for him. He's had to, you know, now he works at this big corporate company where he has to file expense reports and he hates it, right? We knew so, this would happen. So now he gets to go yeah. be a VC. Like, th this is not which a is bad outcome for him. Which right. is exactly what he's wanted right. to do for years. But I think, it, it, I think where the, really and where... he loves it that we're all talking about yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. <laughs> Completely. But you know whose fault this all is? It, it's, it's, it's really Tim's. Yes. You know, if, if he Tim would have... It's, it's how, you, how you handle it. I mean, Aaron And it also not shows the, that Tim did not have a strategy because if Tim had strategy he would have bought Huffington Post and that's it well if he had thought two moves ahead he would have realized yeah, he, what yeah. was coming well, he, yeah it, part of the problem was like he didn't inform Ariana beforehand apparently right. yeah and he and Arrington's not the only uh, journalists that's also venture capitalists there's several of them mm -hmm. but they're not the same polarizing figure and honestly if he had named it crunch fund I think there would have actually been a, a better outcome here I think what my question is is how you know I respect the fact that MG Siegler and and uh, Dave and uh, Paul Carr and all those guys are standing behind the person they respect who's given them this job and and, and made this name for them. But I, I wonder. At I think they're how, very loyal. Yeah, they're very loyal, and I, and I, I admire I, that. I, the, yeah. I think they also really love that. writing about themselves, and now they have this <clears throat> awesome opportunity. <laughs> to do so. No, but what happens to them now, right? Is is it's like you know I I know people that worked for in the Elliot Spitzer camp, and and their jobs were their careers were pretty messed up because of the selfishness of Elliot Spitzer, right? Um, what happens to these guys now, uh, depending on what happens to TechCrunch? I think that's my question. Yeah. Let's talk about, let's move on, because uh, it is kind of an inside baseball argument. I don't think the real world out there cares. Although as journalists, we, we care a lot care because it really, well, we do, and it, and it's, and it really affects, I, I think what Mike's saying, and I think probably we would agree, is that you can trust our readers if we disclose to make the decisions about how objective the material they're reading is and whether they should judge it, and we certainly, I'd certainly trust uh, our viewers and our readers. I wish they didn't have to be so, uh, you know, uh, dis discriminating, but they do. And um, the truth is, you know, there was probably always was some bias. So it's not a bad thing to tell people, look, you've got to consider the source and judge whether that source is reliable on your own. And, yeah. and, and I think that's appropriate. I don't think that's inappropriate. Um, I think that'll be the outcome of all of this. We live in a new world where everybody has an opinion, and you just have to weigh each person and see if you trust that person's opinion. So AT&T's opinion of T-Mobile is, they're awful. They're terrible. Please let us buy them. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's a very interesting ar argument. AT&T answered the government's lawsuit. Of course, the DOJ is asking the courts to block uh, AT&T's $39 million billion dollar takeover of T-Mobile. Uh, AT&T says, well, here's the problem, that T-Mobile really isn't doing very well. And uh, we want to buy them for the wireless spectrum, not because their operations are so good. 
this is uh, this is almost like they're using that pickup artist terminology. They're trying to neg T-Mobile in order to take her to bed or something. Okay, Mr. Scam School. Explain, yeah, yeah. explain oh, no, how this helps how them this get free drinks. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. Well, I mean, I'll tell you, the, the, the part that kills me is how disingenuous this whole thing it's is. so if what you disingenuous. Want to do, if what you want to do is bring a better consumer experience, here's a nutty job. Take whatever money you were going to spend on T-Mobile and spend it to improve your service. Which we understand. found out, by the way, thanks to a leaked memo. The, their own lawyers leaked a memo that said it would cost us $3.9 billion to get to the 97% 4G coverage that we're claiming is the big benefit of the AT&T T-Mobile merger right. for, th for 10 times more. Right, exactly. DOJ, I mean, the uh, uh, AT&T says, quote, T-Mobile is losing customers and subscriber shares in a growing market is not a unique or material competitive constraint on AT&T and will not be one going forward in the absence of this transaction. In other words, these guys is history anyway. You, you really should let us merge. You know, there, there is a reason, there is maybe some precedent for that because, of course, uh, the federal government allowed, there are only two satellite radio services in the U.S., and they allowed XM and Sirius to merge because the argument was they're going to go under without us, right. you know, without the merger. Well, I don't think we're running that threat with uh, AT&T. AT&T ain't well, going under, but what if a T-Mobile would anyway? Well, you know, why not let them buy it? Well, then let them go down and then let them AT&T come buy in and the buy assets? it on a fire sale. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't understand. This Is there one person? I would love to have a drink with the one person who thinks this is a great idea <laughs> and that consumers will win. <laughs> Well, we can go All over right, to AT&T. We can go over to at t headquarters, and I'm sure we can find a we'll couple. We'll find that person to buy you a drink. <laughs> In fact, here it is. The merger is good for consumers, says AT&T. The combination of T-Mobile and AT&T is good for consumers. Integrating the two networks will free up spectrum and create substantial new capacity to meet the spectacular growth in demand resulting from an increasingly online world. They're just throwing crap in there, aren't they? Just I, phrases, random so, phrases. Um, the book, The Master Switch by Tim, Tim Wu. Wu um, yeah. uh, he said this would happen. Yeah, he said this would happen. And, and what he did was he went back and looked at the history of... Um, trying to relate to the internet and, and startups and, and he used you know, long Apple. distance service as an example. <clears throat> he used long distance. So apparently, you know, back when AT and T and all those guys first started out, it was the, essentially the internet of the telephone long distance era, and there were thousands and thousands of these companies that um, offered long distance service, and AT and T gobbled them all up and ended up having a monopoly over long distance, and we kind of got screwed, as we always do. Um, and the same thing could happen again. Uh, if, uh, you know, I respect him a lot. We've been trying to get him on, but he works now yeah, he works for, for the, the FTC. FTC. So that's not going to happen. <laughs> and you probably have the same problem. He won't talk. Yeah. He says, well, the FTC doesn't like me to talk. But, Tim, I, I, I think there is an argument that, yes, it's certainly important to look at history, and history does sometimes repeat itself. His position is that all new technologies start open, and then the and then powers become closed. Become clo powers that be make sure it becomes yeah. closed. Like and AT and T originally with the with the answer machine, they 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 tried to block it because they believed that it would it would make people not need to right. have phone services and right. things like that. And they probably should have, but yes, too late. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the it's all the fault of the answering machine. I, I I just think that the internet is more resilient than long distance service, and I I'm not so worried. Well, about it that. is and it isn't, and and this is a, probably a great discussion because the internet is more resilient because it's an open platform, and it's why it's going to end up beating apps probably on right. mobile devices. However. Uh, the wires that we use for the internet are all owned by AT&T and Verizon. A very, and very entities. few, you know. Yeah. The, the cable companies and a few of the, and just a few. Yeah. Verizon, yeah. But again, I mean, on the flip side, we've been through this before on Twit, but I mean, keep in mind, it's it's easy to say, well, all the wires are owned just by a few people. There are emerging technologies. You have clear wires doing, you know, over the air, WiMAX, and you have other... Uh, other so Sprint immediately acquired them. But yeah, yeah, well, there is that. I have You're not helping my point, Leo. <laughs> I have two words for you. Google Fiber. Google I agree. Yeah. Fiber. I am yeah. praying. In fact, I keep watching this DOJ action, hoping that perhaps this it maybe puts Sprint into play, maybe puts T-Mobile back into play, and that somebody like Google or Apple will come along. I hope Apple buys Sprint. It would be a sixteen billion dollar wow. deal, I believe, or something like that. They can pay cash. I mean, so much sense. Everyone's been speculating, like talking more about Apple buying like a carrier. I just can't see it. I I can understand why it might make sense, but I just can't see it. Let's take a break. I want to know why Nick thinks it's a good idea, and 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 maybe Google buying somebody too, or what, or not. Well, I mean, Google buying somebody, or or you know, or, or um, Google I, buys T-Mobile, Apple buys Sprint. How about that? I would be sure. so okay Sounds with good. that. All right, let's talk about it. Well, I, no I, one can afford AT&T, so, you know. Right, so it has to be a little one. Yeah. But, but, but Apple and Google have plenty of cash. Yes. And they could, they could pay cash. They could write Apple, a check. Apple's got $74 billion now? Yeah, they could write a check. Yeah. Wow. Let's talk about it in a second. First, I want to talk about backing up. 
we got a great panel here. Nick Bilton from The Times, Brian Brushwood from NSFW, Ben Parr from Mashable, Liz Gaines from All Things D. Yeah, I didn't realize you used to work for Ohm. Four years. I love Ohm. I love him too. I love him too. He, is, he called me the Yoda of the internet. I think he's the Yoda of the internet. <laughs> he is Isn't the Yoda he? of the internet. I've, I have edited his stories enough. Who his is his grammar princess is Leia? very much more similar she to Yoda. Is. <laughs> <laughs> she is. That's no. where he learned his craft. Yeah. Yeah. Ohm's just amazing. I just, I just uh, think he's a great guy. Um, however, I also think All Things D is fantastic. Those are two really... Now, by the way, Ohm was used as an example by Mike Harrington. He said, look, Ohm's investing. What's, how come Ohm Malik gets away with investing? Giga Ohm gets away with investing. And nobody says word one, and then Mike Harrington does it. What's the difference? You know, it's it's it. it I don't think that you can likability. It, it, exactly. Yeah. It's all about perception. It's not about the it's actual. Perception. Yeah, I mean, you know, as a gig or own reporter, I was totally uncomfortable with that relationship because it was someone else's conflict that I right. had to disclose. That I, right. you know, it was a weird place. Right. It was not a happy thing for me as a reporter. Yeah, you don't but, want to be put in that situation. But I think you know, Ohm has kind of Ohm is not a daily reporter anymore. Right. He he writes kind of columns about his intuitions, He's which are brilliant. often right about. Well, I read way far off in the future, and it's not really about the kind of deal flow that he's doing. I read uh, Fred Fred Wilson for the same mm. reason. He's, yeah. I mean, he's a venture capitalist. He's got investments, but I don't read him for his reviews of what's, you know, of, of a Web 2.0 company and whether it's a good company. I read him for his insights, and um, I think the same thing. And frankly, I think Mike has insights. So, you know, mm. these guys are pundits. We're pundits. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Anyway, we'll get back to the conversation, and I want to know why Nick Bilton thinks Apple should buy Sprint and how we can talk them into doing that. But first... Pretty please. Pretty, pretty please. <laughs> let's talk about Carbonite. It's back up. Done right. Carbonite uh, was created. It's an interesting story. David Friend, who uh, created the ARP synthesizers, uh, was kind of a serial entrepreneur. He was enjoying the fruits of his leisure. Uh, his daughter was in college. She called home and said, Daddy, I lost my term paper. And he thought, you know... I can't, I can't help her. There's no, she's got no backup. There must be a better way. So he literally said, I'm going to invent something, and he invented carbonite. Kind of nice story because it goes full circle because last year when my daughter headed to college as a freshman, of course, she went with a laptop and carbonite installed on it because I didn't want to get that phone call in the middle of the night. Carbonite's cool because you put it on. It's great for a laptop. You put it on, and it just starts backing up. Whenever you're online, it's backing up. It uses SSL, so even if you're at an open access spot, it's completely secure. You can add your own encryption, by the way, strong encryption, so your privacy is guaranteed. It's Cloud storage, you know, this is cloud storage before anybody even really started talking about this. You can log into your Carbonite account on any computer, on your iPhone, your iPad, your Android phone, your BlackBerry, and there's your data. So it's, you don't even have to wait for a disaster. But when disaster strikes, it's just peace of mind. You know you can restore it. Seven billion files to date have been restored by Carbonite. Wow. Seven billion. For home or for office, try it for free right now. Just go to Carbonite.com. Use the offer code TWIT. You don't need a credit card. And by the way, if you do decide to buy, use Twit again because you'll get 14 months for the price of 12, two free months. It's only $59 a year per computer for the home. For businesses, because it's multi-computers in multiple locations, $229 a year. It is really the best deal and backup out there. Uh, and cloud storage. You got to back it up to get it back, so do it right. With Carbonite. Look, she's installing it right there, right there. Uh, let us move on. All right, so... Sprint's not for sale, we should point out. Although if wow. AT&T acquired T-Mobile, Sprint would be so far behind, you'd well, almost have to sell, Sprint's right? Sprint's not for sale, but it's it's got a market cap of $10.3 billion. It was it's much smaller billion, than uh, very recently. Um, it's Shrinking, you know, too. It's, uh, over the last um, last couple of months, its stock has dropped from... I mean, it's had a 52-week high of 6.45, and now it's at 3.45. It's pretty bad. Um, and uh, what they have... That's too bad, because I love Sprint. Sprint is great, but what they have is an amazing data network. Right. They don't have a great voice network. Who cares? Who phones. uses a spell for but, voice? But, no. the, but the next generation of all these Mac products are going to have data in them. And right. so if you purchase uh, for, for $10 billion, for six, let's just say they, they pay $15 billion, they still have $55 billion in the bank. Right. It's like nothing. Apple, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, Apple. Well, and the rumor is that Apple will offer the iPhone 5 on Sprint yes. and that Sprint might offer an unlimited data plan. Correct. The last company, and of course you have to when you're the also-ran. This is why I want to keep T-Mobile alive because being weak 
is good for consumers because so, you have to entice them. I'll, I'll tell you what, this is certainly uh, super engaging for me because I, I still have the unlimited plan on my iPhone 4. I got grandfathered in. Yeah, but you know it's just a matter of time. Well, and they, that's just it. And yeah. in fact, uh, the thing that kills me about it is that I'm limited. I can never never tether legally. And of course, AT&T is now cracking down on people who tether. Uh, I got I got one of those texts saying, uh-uh, you're tethering, bad boy. And so, uh, and so I went a few months without it, but then I found myself on the way out to DragonCon. I had to access some files, and so I installed a a PDA net on my jailbroken iPhone, which is supposed to have a disguise mode, and, <laughs> and it was 48 <laughs> hours. They, uh, they they nailed me again, and they're really? like, "Okay, seriously, you're busted." And I was and I was like, "All right, well, you know, it's like if if you convert me over to you know a tethering plan, then I'm going to go to another carrier because what's the difference? The only reason I'm still here is for the unlimited." You're so, talking to a representative. Yeah, yeah, point. to AT and T. And he did he understand what you were oh, saying? Oh yeah, no, he knew exactly everything. Yeah. He's like, "Look, I see where you're coming from, and it's obvious from your data usage that you need an unlimited plan. Um, if you want to keep the unlimited plan, this is for reals your last warning." So now I'm on I'm on red line notice, and I'll tell you, man, if they offered tethering on Sprint, I'd be over there so. Far. Fast. And I'm a 13-year subscriber to AT&T Wireless. 13 years? You've had to deal with that relationship? Yeah. <laughs> Awful. Uh, you know, oh, <laughs> is it, isn't the customer service equally bad, though, everywhere? I mean, they're all kind of... Well, Sprint, you know, I've spoken to Sprint's CEO, and, and they really made an effort to try to make customer they, I, service. I left Sprint about 10 years ago because they were really awful. When he came back, that was the first thing he did. Yeah, was he good. was like, I'm right. going to make customer What's service. What's his name? Uh... Yeah. I forget Dan. the... Dan Hesse? Dan, oh, that's guy, yeah. Yeah, the guy that does He does all the ads, yeah. 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 So they've had 16, really guy. 16 consecutive money-losing quarters. That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, 15, sorry. Uh, they're kind of, you know... So, just, so back to the original point. You, wanna, you want them... You want Apple to buy them so that they can put data on all of their devices and say, like... The data's going, going on all the devices. That's not a question, right? If you look at right. some of the, the rumor sites and things like that, you can see next-generation MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros that have... 3G. Um, you know, they have 3G. the 3G and the 4G yep. chips built this, And them. Air requires 3G. just begs Everything for 3D. Does. Everything does. Yeah. Well, right. and, and what your are the things... Your freaking refrigerator wants so, 3G. So the question is, does Apple charge you for that? Is that just one more thing you have to pay for? Uh, or when they, you start to look at competitors, they're going to try to get into this space. And when you start to look at tablet competitors, which is the biggest deal for Apple right now, you know, when, when Android, um, when um, uh, Amazon releases their color tablet in the next couple of months, which they're going to do, it's going to have built in uh, 3G. You're not going to have to pay for so, it. Oh, but so here's the other thing is that, uh, that if Sprint really does have the bandwidth, then uh, Apple has the branding that would allow people to pay an outrageous amount for wireless coverage that just always works. Correct. So here's, I mean, here's the problem I have with the whole thing. Um, Sprint is just the U.S. The Apple is... And it's CDMA, which means it can only be the U.S. It can only be the U.S. Mm -hmm. like, like purchasing, this, purchasing this thing doesn't really help them outside of the U.S. And they're, I mean, they're much bigger than just the U.S. It doesn't solve the overall problem. They would need a world worldwide network and there's no acquisition they could make want to do that they would yeah. have to make five six right. of them and that would cost 75 too bad billion they don't dollars. have enough money to buy deutsche telecom then they, then you'd have everything what's deutsche know? telecom worth these they, days 200 if, well if, if t-mobile's worth 39 39 billion i think deutsche well, telecom. they're worth a lot of money but you don't have to be an all-cash deal well apple also, stock has got some value Apple stock has got some tremendous. You, know, you don't have to say here's a check. You can you can work at it. Well, I've, I mean, AT&T has a market cap of 164 billion, completely out of the question. But uh, I wouldn't buy AT&T if they were like 12 bucks. Right. I mean, no no offense to AT&T, but but I, but maybe they have maybe the strategy is that they they focus on the U.S. for that, and then they they have a um, a, a 3G chip that works across you know overseas or something like that. I don't know. I well, mean, there is the Qualcomm chip that's both CDMA and GSM. This, this is the next chip, the chip that's going to be in yeah, the next so iPhone. The, yeah. And so so the, I mean, the other problem with the the strategy is if the the partners will get pissed and they'll just be like, we're not going to sell your iPhones once you sell it, and that that's. Oh come on! The partners, the partners are so pissed right now at, at a million things Apple's done. And what about the the that, text that, messaging that's, thing? That that's coming that out? is crossing. The, acquiring Sprint would be crossing the line. I I, I, I I swear to you. They can you both. can you turn your back on the iPhone though nowadays as a carrier? It's worth gold. It's gold. That's yeah. a gold. Phone. Verizon survived forever without the iPhone. Yeah, they would survive with. They survived, but now they're happy. They, yes. They're, they yeah. The, the, how long until? Do you uh, want to just survive? <laughs> Do you want to be at the whim of Apple if you are Verizon or AT and T? Hey, this is business. You're always at, there's Fair somebody, point. somebody somebody once told me because I said I want to I want to start my own company so I don't, I don't have to worry about the man and they said somebody's always the man. <laughs> there's <laughs> someone's there's, always the man. Somebody's always it's the true. man. You can't get away from it. You're going to deal with somebody you hate no matter what. Well, in that case, you start your own company. That's the worst way to avoid dealing with the man yeah. because every customer becomes so, the man. So I found. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're all the freaking man.
I like the idea. I don't think it's going to happen. Nick. I like the idea. Though. It's $15 well, billion. Dollars is nothing. So, so here's, here's the question is... You know what? It'd be, it would be smart because Tim Cook would be in a way saying... Hey, I'm I'm a player. That's different. It's not just Steve Jobs. I'm I'm in this game. Yep. Yeah. And that, that wouldn't hurt, wouldn't hurt to have you that. Could also, you know, what would be killer as a as a Apple device user is having some kind of unified data plan across my devices. Oh my God, it would be ridiculous amazing. How many different data plans I have right now? Yep, yeah, I agree completely. So you're, and when they put the, when they put 3G or 4G in my laptop, yeah, it's going to be like, you'll have another contract. Yeah. So now Apple I've got an iPad user. contract. Well, I got a phone contract. Uh, well, no, maybe I, my phone is also with Apple. Well, and that's where hotspot's nice because you—if you have a hotspot, then you'll need Wi-Fi on all your devices, and you can use. But then, the what, but that's another device you've got to carry around. You've it's got to keep charge. Well, no, your phone. Yeah. No, no. See, I have an yeah, Android phone, phone that works yes. as a hotspot. Yes. yes. Uh, with T-Mobile. Yeah. I, I, I have a hotspot that's with Verizon only because I want to make sure my AT&T phone fails. I have Verizon, Verizon as a backup because yep. just no, none of the networks will. Uh, are reliable enough. See, that's I was, what you're I was missing, Brian. You need a hotspot. Well, well, yes, I definitely do. And that was one of the best parts when I was traveling with OMG Chad. He had the Verizon smartphone, and I had the the Apple iPhone. So we would take turns, you know. That's why we hired other. him away from you. I know. But now I've got John Tilton, who has another <laughs> iPhone. So now we're both. Damn screwed. you! Yeah. <laughs> that's why I got the T-Mobile dongle. So I'm like the only person in San Francisco using it. It's great. It's a really good thing not to be an AT&T user in the uh, Bay Area. And I imagine there are other areas of the country where yeah. that's the case. So too. supposedly it's 4G capable which means 4G once every month or so. It means you never get it. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you the real swing vote is the fact that now that I've got three devices between my phone, my laptop, and my iPad, it, it just makes sense. It would be idiotic to set up all three on separate accounts and pay $150 or whatever for data. Ladies and gentlemen, a picture of sushi. Oh, <laughs> yes. This, I'm hungry again. Mm, that's a lunch at Apple. We verified that. Lots yep. and lots of pixels of sushi. Lot eight megapixels worth of sushi. Although right. this is, a, by the way, we should say this was on Flickr briefly, made private quickly. Uh, Apple employee, uh, an engineer. He no longer works for the company. Oh, Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's curious. I wonder. You know. I mean, if you accidentally <clears throat> post a picture from an iPhone five, if you get in trouble. Um, but uh, the EXIF information was there. People were able to verify this is a next generation iPhone, uh, unless it's completely faked EXIF. The EXIF information said the GPS location was at one infinite loop. I just uh, have a quick question. Why do you think this person is eating vegetable rolls with all that wonderful fish? That's a good question. You've got the avocado roll and then the incredible just, you know, salmon. That's what they offer at Apple. That's You're going to eat offer it. At Apple. And what is that thing on the upper left? Is That uh, that doesn't look good. That looks, that looks like, like hummus. It, yeah, right? It looks like it's some kind of hummus? hummus sushi. It's like it's Tim it's Cook's leftover it's lunch. It's <laughs> sea urchin. That's sea urchin? Yeah. Tobiko? No. Uni. Uni. Oh. <laughs> Did we really just get distracted talking about fish? Is that really what just happened? That's the name of the sushi. Ah. <laughs> there we go. We've got the. Uh, you need any more random facts? I guess you the, the CEO of Sprint. The name so, of that random piece of sushi. So there was considerable, ridiculous amount of parsing of the uh, of this data from Ars Technica and others, and it's What's pretty clear deal? that it is either a Sony se eight megapixel sensor or an 8 megapixel sensor from another company that Apple uses called OmniVision. Uh, that the, uh, that's because even though it was a cropped picture, uh, that the, full, the EXIF showed that the final dimensions, the big dimensions, would in fact be 8 megapixel. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do we care? It's, well, uh, I mean, I'll tell you what I care about. Esoteric industry or what? I mean, so esoteric. You know, it's going to yeah. be f2.4, whereas the maximum aperture of the iPhone 4 is f2.8. I mean, that's really interesting. The reality is there's a lot more people sitting at home <laughs> looking at Flickr XF data than, like, going to China <laughs> and looking at what's actually being <laughs> produced. That's the amazing the part, right? Well, I'll tell you the one thing shot. I noticed about this picture is that there's no giant blue dot, which I can't believe still is every single photo you take in fluorescent light. You, do, you, have you get the, a giant blue dot? The giant blue discoloration in the center of all the iPhone pictures. Have you not noticed this? No. Maybe oh, my gosh. I think there's something nuts. wrong. That avocado phone. doesn't no. look very fresh, actually. It's not no. me. Chat room will explode <laughs> to defend you know, me right food I, I know that this is, in fact, not an apple lunch because that avocado wouldn't be much fresher if it yes. were that. <laughs> Steve Jobs hand selects each avocado for the sushi. <laughs> Um, um, so, I, I, this is actually a big deal of a story, though, because we have heard that um, uh, the next iPhone from uh, uh, the CEO of Sony, who actually he said it, let's use our it, best uh, image sensor, yes. uh, is going to be eight megapixel. But w w I think it's a big deal for for the camera companies that are are losing customers quicker than uh, cam camera phones are just 
it that's just what's going to place point yep. and shoot. There, there's there's always going to be a small place for like point and shoot, and for um, the high super quality cameras. Absolutely. But most people are turning to their phones because they can take the picture and then they can send it to the friends. I have anecdotal evidence. It's really fun because. Uh, We've been, I've been posing for pictures with fans since 1998. Mm -hmm. So when it first started, everybody would come to the events with a disposable camera uh, with film in it. And then I remember very well when the Sony Mavica came out because you'd have to wait and wait and wait. <laughs> and Because th th it was saving to a floppy disk. What? Uh, what? Oh, yeah. No, I totally remember What's that. What's a floppy yeah. disk? Liz is baffled by this. <laughs> it's saving to a what? It's not young enough for you. A it's floppy yes. disk. And then I, I remember that the batteries would die and so everybody would come up and say oh the battery's dead for like uh, two years and then I remember when it but now it's camera phones it's almost universally camera phones very few people now bring point-and-shoot cameras this this is the same thing we're seeing in the video game market where for casual gaming you're not carrying around a Nintendo DS anymore you just whip out the camera phone and, and it's not as good uh, the smartphone experience is not as good as your desktop uh, you. this is a floppy for, disk for, right for here. the benefit of, Whoa, of Liz this, this, is, this is what we used you know back in 2001 we, you know this you know how much okay Okay, this is good. <laughs> Take a guess how much data you can store on that. Oh, Any idea? What is it? What one point? <laughs> That's Klingon. That's <laughs> it. For shut up. Now they're saying in the chat room. That's one one point four four megabytes. Megabytes. That's less than. I mean, a gigabyte. Uh, well, <laughs> I couldn't fit one image from my camera on twelve of these. Oh, easily, yeah. Okay. But have your own those have your own stack. Apparently, this is Adobe Illustrator 6.0, the installer. Oh man, Adobe Illustrator 6.0. Yeah, yeah. You get a floppy, and you get a floppy. Yeah. And you get a floppy. Yeah. Everybody gets a floppy. Hand those out. Thank you, <laughs> OMG Chad, showing once again how valuable that acquisition has been from uh, Leo. Do you have any, rubbing uh, it in, aren't you, Leo? <laughs> wow. Do you have any whiskey, Leo? Um, yeah. Where's the Macallan, Chad? Do you know? It's, That's uh, actually the only reason I came up here. I, drove <laughs> from San it's, I think it's in my office, isn't it? Look, there's a cask strength. Go ahead and get that out because I think that... Uh, I need something to go with my chocolate M&M's. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> what kind of peanuts are in those? Like, there ha have what, kind of, <laughs> what kind of peanuts? Like They're American peanuts. peanuts. What kind of yes. peanuts? Well, I believe this would be, according to the EXIF information, <laughs> no, the, um, the new M&Ms, which we, I think we consumed entirely, have pretzels inside. Mm. Have you heard of those? Mm -mm. Mm, that sounds very, good. Yeah. Really excellent. You know, I'm just going to take a break because obviously we're going to take an M&M break. We invite you at home to take an M&M break with us. Uh, while we talk a little bit about audible.com show of hands audiobook listeners Come uh, on. Oh yeah look at that this is great in fact you know what this ad's no longer going to be worth anything yeah. no because it, it will because because I've got the I know the book everyone's going to be reading this year but are there people at home who are what not yet audible members uh, yes. What's the book? <sighs> well, no, here's, here's, here's who they are. And to be honest, I'm not going to lie. I'm one of them. I keep telling myself I'm not going to read so many books, and I don't sign up for the so regular plans. you've not plans. joined? I know. Oh. I still buy them no, 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 one no, at a time, go, and I waste don't, so much money. I yeah, spend don't like go all the car. I'll be honest. I joined just a few weeks ago, and my car trips are so much better now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Me too. I Working can, out is better? Everything's everything. better. Sex is better. <laughs> I don't know what audiobook you're listening to. When you've to. been married as long as I have. Wait, is um, this, are you listening to the audiobook during sex, or is this... <laughs> is that what makes it better, or...? <laughs> Let's it's like just that study uh, that came out. It's for CNN awkward moments, moments when you burst out laughing. Ten percent of women text during sex. Ten percent of women. Some crazy number like that. Boy, yeah. it's, I thought it was a hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> depends what audiobook you're listening. Hanging to. out with the wrong women. <laughs> uh, Audible.com, folks. <laughs> Audible.com/slash/twit. To actually, no, I'm not going to go into this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go there, but there is, in fact. A, uh, there's some, some, well, there's some. No, they, they have erotic fiction. They have erotic that's fiction. Actually, yeah, yeah. I, think I wasn't what I was. I scrolling faster than I've seen I know. It's got, so got him a little excited in the chat. Like, what is sex? I've never heard of this hey, before. I've heard of girls, but not this other thing. What is that? What does that have to do with an 8 megapixel camera? <laughs> you could get in bed with Susie Bright. Um, it's so, actually a really good uh, kind of a podcast, but they um, that they have it on. You know, if you subscribe to Audible, this is another reason to subscribe, Brian. You also get the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times for freezies. For freezies every day, every oh, day? dude. They get an audio version of it. Wow. Uh, so Nick no, Bilton said, wow. "No, it's not. It's a human reads it. Actually, I know it's a human. Yeah, man. it's really quite yeah. good. <laughs> but he sounds exactly like that. <laughs> yeah, mm, sounds like he's from France. So uh, here's what you do: go to audible.com/slash/twit2. Now this is a special place." 
where you sign up for the Platinum the account. That's place. two books a month. Good. And uh, your first month is free. Your first two books is free. So this is a way to get two books free. So, Brian, give us a book that we could all listen Check to. Check this out. Look up Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. It's read by Will Wheaton. Some people remember uh, Ernest Will Klein, is the guy who, uh, who wrote the Fanboys <laughs> movie. And uh, it takes place in this... Did you say Will, Will Wheaton? Wheaton. <laughs> cool whip. <laughs> whip. You guys remember that, right? I remember. Yes. <laughs> Leo, you got to pull that up. I'm sorry. All right. After, well, yeah. after the end, I will. Yeah. So check this out. This takes place like uh, 50 years in the future, and you got this crazy character who uh, dies with uh, pretty much the richest man, $250 billion, and he leaves his fortune in an Easter egg in a virtual online oh, world. Oh, you're kidding. And because this guy is obsessed... So this would be a, a logical successor to maybe uh, Daniel Suarez's Freedom and Demon, because right. it's kind of that same idea. Well, yeah. well and, and the, the, here's, the, here's the hook that's going to make this thing. What This is this is the geek's Da Vinci Code. Everyone's going to be talking about it because because this character died and he was always obsessed with 1980s geek culture then all of a sudden the whole world becomes obsessed with 1980s geek culture so that they can try to decode where his easter egg is so as a result you have these bizarre mashups where you have uh dungeons dragons playing you know playing joust uh, against you know while flying around in x-wing fighters i mean it is it is so visual. It reminds me, the last time I remember having a book that took me on such an outrageous ride was probably the original Snow Crash uh, from Neil Stevenson. Oh, I love Snow Crash. You know, the new, Neil Stevenson has a new book coming out, by the way. My book comes out in paperback this, in a couple of weeks. Oh, you know, you, your book is on here, too, Nick. Okay, yeah. so so book one, Ready Player One. Yes. And book two, Nick Bilton's book, which is really uh, great about living in the future. Yes. Did uh, you read it? Works. I, I lived, read it. I live in the future, and here's how it works. Why Your World, Work, and Brain Are Being Creatively Disrupted. This is actually a really great book, Nick. You did Thanks, a great job. I appreciate it. So paperback coming up, but you can also get it uh, for audio. audiobook. Yep. So he, this is one of your two books, audible.com slash twit2. There's actually so much stuff. It's really challenging. One of the reasons that we give you picks is because there's 75,000 choices at Audible. So many great 75, books. 75,000 audio yeah, books? Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I mean, not just audio books. They have radio shows, comedy performances. I just, uh, I'm, my next uh, listen is, I, is, I have a, actually a section called My Next Listen, is um, Neil Gaiman's, um, they do a dramatization of American Gods. I cannot wait. And there's in oh, wow. I can't, it's a full cast production. So That's they act awesome. it out. So this is something new that they're doing, and I love, instead of just a reader reading it, which is actually really good, because yeah. these readers are the greatest, they also will dramatize this stuff. So this is a 10th anniversary uh, uh, production of American Gods, which is a wonderful book. You know about the HBO project based no, on American that? Gods. Yeah, no, that's that's their next They're doing franchise. an HBO? Oh. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he's writing more material because American Gods <clears throat> isn't going to be enough to survive so many seasons. I have to say, though, Read the book first, always. Oh, absolutely. Read Game of Thrones first, always. Because you want to read the book and then watch the show, not absolutely. the other way around. Uh, I right just right. tweeted at you. You uh, tweeted at I me? I tweeted at you. You should check that tweet and click on that link and turn on the audio. Uh, all right. Turn on the audio, cool. ladies and gentlemen, Twit. because thank you. By the way, audible.com slash twit2. Subscribe today. It runs on the iPod, iPhone, all the iDevices, your Zune. It's really great on a Kindle, by the way. All the new Kindles. You got not only have your Kindle books, but you can also, because Amazon owns Audible, you can also see all your Audible books. And your whole library is always available, so it's great. Audible.com slash twit2. Two books waiting for you now. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Cool Whip. Hey, new Brian. Oh, I see you're having pie. You know, pie isn't really pie without Cool Whip. Everything's better with Cool Whip. Oh, this is the second one. No, this is the second one. What about it? One. It doesn't bother you the way I pronounce it? <laughs> cool whip? No. So I have to go back because that's referring back to a previous episode. That's the secondary episode with the second Brian <laughs> where he's replaced. You really have to be a fan of this show, I think. Oh, it's the greatest show in, in, uh, on television or on the internet, as they say. I think this is it. Yeah, I think so. Well, let's let's check it out here. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is uh, oh, a little Hulu ad. <laughs> Now's a good time to ask if Chad ever found that whiskey. Hey, Brian. <laughs> oh, Meg, hey. Is this it? Yep. Hey, listen, I hope you're feeling all right about our little talk the other day. You know, about us being just friends and all. Oh, yeah. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. And, hey, look, I, I want to thank you for being so great to me. So... I baked your pie. Oh, wow. Hey, that looks delicious. Where's the whiskey? Mm. Wow, those are yeah, good. The What's whiskey? in there? Well, there's some apples and some cinnamon. This is such a long setup. <laughs> what? My hair is in the pie, Brian. And now it's inside of well, This is of when you. they fell in love. Well, Part she fell in love with Brian. Did we it's find another wrong clip? Yeah, we found <laughs> Do you feel yeah, me, Brian? Know. 
Do you right, feel me? <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to get some cool whiskey? Yes. Awesome whiskey. Cool whip. Ooh, you got some pie. Huh? <laughs> and there goes Leo. Uh, oh, here it is. Here, sure. this is it. Ooh, right here. Have some of that cool whip. What'd you say? You can't have a pie without cool whip. Cool whip. Cool whip. Yeah. You mean cool whip? <laughs> yeah. Cool whip. Cool whip. Cool whip. Cool whip. <laughs> cool whip. You're saying it weird. Why are you putting so much emphasis on the H? What are you talking about? Just saying it. Cool whip. What are you, cool you talking about? about? Pie. Pie tastes better with cool whip. Say whip. Whip. Now say cool whip. Cool whip. Cool whip. Cool whip. Cool whip. Cool whip. You're eating hair. No. <laughs> <laughs> I have returned. All right, did we did we Very lose gifts. the? Uh, hey, there you go. Wh it's called McCallum whiskey. Whiskey. I don't whiskey. Th I don't think maybe we drank the McCallum at what? the party. Whoa. What? What do you got, Oman G. Chad? Is what it? It better be. Have I have some Balvenie. What the hell's that? Yeah, what is this? Richter's. It's like well <laughs> whiskey. There's Balvenie uh, somewhere. There's Balvenie. All right, I'll try this. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, he'll take whatever. It's not much either. Let's grab one of each. All right. That looks good. This interval brought to you by Cool Whip <laughs> and Whiskey. Anybody and want some? All right, Googlebot Zagat. What was that all about? Yay? Question? <laughs> I don't know if it's a yay. It's a yay for Nina and the, the Zagat this? people who made $125 million. We're going to have to do you drink it? Do you drink it neat? Would you like an ice, with some, uh, ice &Ms cube? In it. With m and <laughs> have, nice. have a round peanut. I double dog they, You know, I never you. thought about that, but how do they make those they so round? Them. Well, that's what I'm saying. They're like special peanuts. Yeah, I think they're GMO. Wait, did you say you have more coming? Because we're almost out here. I don't want any. Sure that's that all right. Give it to Ben. Ben. You know, you Somebody has to stay sober. <laughs> I'll, wait I'm, the, I'll wait for the next I'm one. I'm not driving. I'm driving the show. The Balvenie will be good. If we can find the Balvenie, that's very good. It's in a... Uh, it's in its box still. <clears throat> oh, it's still in its box. Sweet. Yeah. Ed, it was just an earthquake. 2.4. Really? Yeah. Here? It's somewhere in California. See, if we didn't drink so much, I think we'd have <laughs> been noticed. Rock, San Jose. Yeah, yeah, it's just down the road. I'm still waiting to experience my first earthquake. Oh, yeah, no. I've just never experienced one. Ever, ever experienced either? an earthquake? No, 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 no. Ever experienced an earthquake? Uh, that last one, little that what spot, the one after the new one. Ever experienced a real earthquake? <laughs> no. Wait, how long have you lived here? Oh. Uh, no, no. I wasn't here in 89. I remember. Oh, Wait a minute. It's cask strength McAllen now that you've had, now that you've had like the other stuff. Down the drink uh, yes. I didn't think we drank it all. It's a palate cleansing now. <laughs> I remember 1989. Wait, so... so um, That was a great earthquake. I spent, the, I spent the year in New Jersey, so I missed that one. You missed it? I did. That's I was kind of sad. Year. Um, no, wait till you have a real earthquake. You'll stop drinking whiskey. I tell you that right now. <laughs> it's uh, because you don't expect the floor to move, right? Oh. You kind of feel like this should be solid, and it's not. What, it's what really. Not. Everything moves. Everything yeah. you feel like the world is like. Ben, mm. Leo. No, yeah. all right. Yeah, I'll have some of that. That's good stuff. <laughs> you guys can drink that other crap. Um, so <laughs> I have a question now, Leo. If you were um, one of the CEOs of Google, uh, would you buy Zagat? Yes. Remember why? now, I'll why? tell you why. Remember, Google tried to buy Yelp, was rebuffed, spurned. Correct. Google tried to buy Groupon. Thank God they were spurned on mm -hmm. that one, because I think Groupon may have been a little bit of a I agree. pyramid scheme. Uh, $6 billion they offered for Groupon, and, and Groupon said... Groupon worth like now like uh, $12, right? That's I don't know. You know, they keep putting off things. the IPO yeah. because, uh, well, the Wall Street, the, the boss market's down. I think that there's some real issue about uh, Groupon's actual worth. Th Correct. This, well, that's the, uh, uh, there was a fantastic Wired article talking about what a bum deal Groupon was for the people actually doing it. And it's like they basically restated the exact Groupon model, but uh, in reverse order. And it, it just sounded like the most ridiculous, like who on earth would ever sign up for that? This entire acquisition is, seems like it, it has all the classic characteristics of a Mercer Meyer acquisition. Like Mercer wrote the blog post. I like the Gat, so I'm going to buy it. <laughs> she, she definitely. That was, was very like sexist to me. Google for that. Okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> she wrote a haiku. She, she did. A haiku for the acquisition. You yes, find I do. It. Yep. Oh dear. It's tweeted. All right, find the haiku. Why wasn't it Google Here's why strategically I think it's a good idea. I, and I think they tried to get Yelp, and, and when they couldn't get Yelp, they created Hot Pot. Remember? Mm -hmm. Right. Not yep. much traction. Correct. Uh, th what Google really wants, and where the big cash, of course, is for, is if you start using Google to find places to eat. And perhaps, and there's some concern from uh, Open Table that Google might even do a reservation system built around this. Uh, there's a lot of money uh, for Google in that kind of uh, local search. Um, but the problem is right now that Google can create something like Places and Hot Pot, and it's got no traction because we've got other things to use. Correct. We already use Zagat. So I you use think Zagat they're buying a lot. Zagat? Oh, yeah. Zagat. When I was in Paris uh, for Le Web, 
I was in a hotel. I was saying, well, is there anything good here? Zagat has it, and you just go there. I use Zagat in every town that they're in. I think that what this does is it gives them some credibility. It gives them a brand for hot pot or places, and then makes their local search relevant and valuable. So I think 125 million, that's a deal. That's nothing. That's interest. Well, especially, yeah, especially for Google and to get an instant um, uh, foothold into a space they want to get into. I can So they bought the brand. They didn't buy the functionality. They didn't buy the reviews. They bought the brand. And I think it's a good, it's a damn good brand, don't you? I think it's a very good brand. I actually think this is a good acquisition on their part. They're going to be, like I said, they were they couldn't get Yelp, but this gives them uh, very... It's better than Yelp. Yeah, very, very credible. Right. And they can, there's a lot of ways they can integrate that. And I don't remember what they were offering for It's kind of funny, Yelp, though, because it's like... Old school user-generated content, right? It like was a book. You know, but there's there's all these um, new and emerging, interesting restaurant review and recommendation apps, right? right. There's all these people who are trying to apply uh, data mining to or collaborative filtering or whatever it's going to be to figure out how can we do things, how can we find you a better restaurant than Yelp can find you? But Zagat is a trusted but, source. But Zagat is more, I think, like just like the listing, right? It's the canonical, like this is exactly what you can expect. Oh, it's from more than the listing. Have, they have reviews. Right. Well, they have the reviews, but it's like it, 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 exactly what you're saying. Like it gives an air of credibility mm. to it. It's like because there's so many, when you look up places, often you don't get what you're looking for. You get kind of bad information. And this you is use, a way it's for a trusted like, name the way like uh, Fodor's is for international exactly. travel. Do you yeah. use Zagat's on your phone? Mm -mm. Oh, see, I do. Do you? I don't. Oh, maybe that's why you guys are confused. I use Foursquare. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, don't I, care. To, I really don't care what Dens thinks is a good no, restaurant. It's not, but it's not okay. So there's some really cool features to Foursquare in the in like with the Explore. And I'm not. I'm friends with Dennis, so I should probably preface that so people don't write a blog post about me or something. But like, so the Explore here. Um, you can there's like these neat little features where you can literally type in Thursday in Explore and it'll tell you all these really cool things that are going on Thursdays in the area that you're in, and it's I feel like it's it's more. I I used to get the other day I was out in the Inner Sunset, and I wanted a good Italian restaurant, so I I did this on the phone, but of course you could do this on the uh, website uh, too. Well, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> That's, Sorry. That's really, we couldn't find any restaurants in not, San Francisco. That's not the result I was looking for. <laughs> oh. Google bought again. them how long ago? What but, the hell? But the, the app costs $10. I have, to, oh. I have to buy something for $10 Wait, when the, I can already... The Gat app yeah, is $10? I just looked it up All right, just Google, to make sure. you guys better yeah, give that away on. for free. Oh, they, well, they will. will. Yeah. Oh, they will. But that's what I'm saying. It's it's not relevant to the current discussion about restaurants, so maybe it was a good So good because, I, because I haven't paid here, I'm not seeing the full information, but you'll get a oh. score from 1 to 30 on food, decor, service, and cost. It's very accurate. Very accurate. And um, you can you can rank via by food, and you will get great re results, particularly now, in areas like New York, San Francisco, where the reviewers, because it's it's real people. Oh, it's, I know it's real people are reliable. But it's like how do how do they do their data mining? Don't they do they just have like a poll box at each location after you finish your meal? No, you no, no, no. You have to, no. This is where Zagat is a brand that's so valuable. Is you uh, as a Zagat user will f go to the web, or yes, you're right, or fill out a form. Uh, you'll have if you have the book because he started in these long red books that everybody. Bought. Remember those? Um, remember books? Yeah, remember books? <laughs> um, but no, not too Zagat is a brand, I think, that made the transition to the web and to the smartphone quite yes, well, actually. Yes, they did do a good job. Uh, and they did charge 10 bucks, and it was worth it. And uh, it, once you once you buy it, you'll realize it really is the way to go. Not Yelp. Because the problem with Yelp, Hot Pot, even Foursquare, Have especially you Foursquare. Have you seen the new ones like Ness or Nosh or Alfred? No, and, and for, There's a lot and of them. For, what is it? Food, uh, food, uh, food spotting? spotting. Mm -hmm. Food spotting. The problem with those is, you, is the reviews are spotty. They're, they're all over the place. You don't know. But for some reason, the Zagat reviews are reliable and trustworthy. So I think that this is the brand, and I think it's a smart brand to buy. It is. It's the photos well, of here's, food. But there needs to be something in the middle, right? I mean, I, I, as much as I want a reviewer to tell me what is good, I also want my friends to tell me what is good. Well, that, um, but Google can do Yelp. that, can't they? Well, that's Google hopefully could. what they'll do. That was Yelp, and there's flaws with Yelp, right? There because, are many flaws with Yelp. Yeah. Oh, there's... Uh, I, but they're okay, great. Well, they still do pretty well. Like I, they, they I, 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 Yelp I mean, Yelp really is still useful. my go-to. Absolutely. Really interesting. How about something like um, Angie's List? Does anybody ever use that? Also, something you have to pay for, right? Yep, not free. Why would I pay for things? Because <laughs> unlike Yelp, where anybody, including a competitor, can put a review, with Angie's List, those are they're not anonymous. These are and same with Zagat. They're not anonymous reviews, and I think that that's what makes the difference. Yeah, I just don't feel like it's that high stakes of a decision to decide where to go to dinner and what to order. 
Well, what, oh, that's a good point. What, what I actually do a lot is I search Twitter and Facebook um, uh, to see what people are saying. So, like, when I'm in San Francisco and I want a good burger, I'll go to Twitter search and I'll say SF good burger, and I kind of start to see what people have. have that's tweeted. probably yeah, a more sophisticated roll your own technique than most Correct. people are oh, going to yeah, use. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think you got it backwards. I think you just ask everyone, just shout, hey, I'm in San Francisco. Where should I go? Or look what, at the table next do. to you and see what they were I actually there. did that in uh, Buenos Aires. Uh, I went to Buenos Aires. How was Buenos Aires? Argentina. Did you go to Barcelona too? I thought I went to Barcelona. Yeah, Buenos Aires. <laughs> when I was in Buenos Aires, I tweeted that I'm going to be in Buenos Aires. And I said, where should I go? And they gave me a place to go. And then I tweeted, I'm going to be there. And six people showed up. And we had dinner together. So it actually was a great experience. It was, it was one of the most memorable experiences I've ever had because, A, I found a great restaurant in a giant city. That's great. Via Twitter. And then I met people, which was really fantastic. That's fantastic. That's something, though, again, like what you do, that is, I think, most people don't have the skill Correct. set or the desire to do that. Or the, or the, the Twitter follows. I mean, the... Well, or the Twitter follows. No, but you don't, you, I'm not just searching my Twitter followers. I'm searching Twitter. Oh, I am. Yes. <laughs> you hear that? If you're not following Leo, he's dead. You're dead to him. You're dead to me. Well, uh, unless you're, you're from Barcelona. Uh, this is weird. <clears throat> This is a Google Plus post uh, from a couple of days yeah, ago. Yeah, talking about Easter eggs, right? <laughs> Andy Arndt, who's a software engineer at Google, said that Bing <laughs> has a couple of uh, Easter egg search queries. If you search for more evil than Satan himself... And first of all, the setup for this would be like, that's, that's what everyone called Microsoft, more evil than, than Satan himself. Was, it was at some point, <laughs> if you did a search, then Microsoft came up as the number one thing. So their rebuttal to that is now on Bing, if you type in more evil than Satan himself... You get well. I guess not now anymore. you get the sort. Now you get the story, which is yeah. great. Yeah. But for a while, you would get ten to the one hundredths. Which of course. Which of course is a Google. Oh, uh, I didn't get that right away. I'm slow. I didn't do well in math. Well, and that's what I like. I actually think, look, if you're going to be petty and act like yeah, the, you're a sophomore in it. high school, at least be classy and clever with your jokes. Well, which I actually like this other one even better. Classy and clever. The other uh, clever. query that has an Easter egg is H A Y B B. P R Q A G. Hibipercrag. That's the oh, this fake is, this word. Is the Bing sting. That's right. That's that's what that's the fake word that Google made up to see if Bing was copying their search re results or not. Ooh. And then when once this started showing up, they're like, "Aha! We nabbed you, Bing." And so Bing, you know, thinking that it's petty and whiny, responded with, uh, "Now when you search for that word, it shows up as a translation that the <laughs> word is orcish. <laughs> it's orcish for well, whiner. Let's, let's see if that's still working. Cor By the way, Stephen Colbert apparently. No, uh, they took it out. They took it out. Yeah. It was going to happen. I'd like to see more of this. I think so. Let them fight. I, yeah, no, oh, absolutely. I see. I see look, and in fact, if you're Bing, you roll with it and say, that's right. Those are the first two uh -huh. of 8,000 Easter eggs. Have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> right on. Search, search all you want. We'll make more. Uh, I think you're right. I think that's great. And, uh, I mean, I mean, does anybody like like? Well, I'm not using Bing anymore. That's too petty. I'm. <laughs> no, yeah, you, know, you know, a bunch of engineers are high fiving each other when that came. Oh, ma totally. It makes me want to use Bing more. <laughs> uh, Twitter and Bing renew their social search partnership. Okay, we knew about that. Twitter is suing Twit Ad because they use the word tweet in their slogan. Yeah, that's weird. But apparently Twitter has a trademark on Tweet. Well, but they're late to get it. Like everyone else, all the, all the third-party apps got it before they did. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we trademarked Twit. Is that why they call them Tweets? Because they can't know. call them Twits? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, because we had the trademarks four years before Twitter got its trademark. I, I think because People they... think that we copied Twitter. That always gripes me. Yeah. We didn't. But, like, if you had the copyright, if you had the trademark, yeah. then, uh, then I mean, they, uh, Twitter has climbed uphill shouting, no, no, they're tweets, they're tweets. Stop calling them twits, they're tweets. Right. I mean, that's got, I, I think I that they, I think that's because of us. So, but yeah. I, I may be egotistical of me, but I think that that is actually kind of a backhanded. Uh, <laughs> he was like, I think it's less me and more the pipe wrench I was holding. <laughs> <laughs> we sent him a letter. Uh, did you really? Oh, yeah. And a pipe wrench. Written by a lawyer. <laughs> a pipe wrench. Written by a, a trained lawyer. Just want to Michael say. Michael Arrington. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now that, that would be good. I would hire Mike to be my lawyer in a minute. All right, Nick Bilton. Do Bilton's you guys capitalize tweet? What's your, what's your style at Matt? We're not allowed to say tweet in articles. Really? Anymore. Really? No. Wow. What do you Where? say a Twitter posting is? A Twitter message. Oh, man. Leo oh, Lepore in a Twitter message posted. I remember they had like an article or something. And they why announced is that? this change. It was a uh, Phil, Phil Corbett, I believe it was, or uh, one of the Styles guys said uh, that we're not allowed to, well, to use the word tweet. But it's, it wasn't Phil about to, trademark. It was about no, being was clear. About, it but it's language. now in the dictionary. Mm. It's fine now. No, I like Twitter message better than tweet. Hmm. 
Actually, really? yeah. I like tweet. I under. I do under. Lowercase, I mean. You lowercase tweet? Yeah. It's not a proprietary we do too. tweet. That's our all things D style, which I think is weird. I would capitalize it. Cause it's Why? Because it oh, refers I to it. should capitalize it too. No, it, it, it's, it's a. An action. It's a, an action, though. It's an action. Like, uh, like uh, you can. But you can't tweet in other domains. Like, you have to be using Twitter to use it. So it seems proprietary. Well, I don't know. Like, like what about. Um, what do you call a Google Plus? Oh, that's awkward. That's very awkward. <laughs> Google Plus message plus? posting. I don't know. A a Google message. Post message posting posted on the internet on a website <laughs> belonging got, to Google.com. I, got, what, I just, did, I just, just got an alert. Someone mentioned me in a comment on a post. There you go. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> don't, if plus. I were you, I wouldn't read it. Uh, so, <laughs> but did you, uh, well, so this is interesting. So All Things D has a style guide. Oh, yeah. Mashable well, has a style uh, guide. Is yeah, it a book? Do. We have a hyphen in startup. It's terrible. What's a hyphen startup? Start hyphen up. Oh, you guys, we have to hyphen email, e-reader. Um, anything. E, we, e hyphen reader. E hyphen e, e hyphen mail. Web e hyphen mail. Oh, the best one is website is capital W well, space lowercase. I s. know. Well, the, re the, re the reason oh. for e dash mail is because um, the AP style guide, which we base our style guide on, e is e dash mail. E used to because it was written in 1924. It, but, they, but they changed it to just email, and so when they changed it, we changed ours to there. Like, so you This is awesome. I feel yeah. like I landed at we, the we, wrong we, dinner <laughs> table, and we, you guys are all English majors. Brian and I don't have any. <laughs> Style if you're at all. Not, right? This is you just say it, right? You well, but the problem is this week in journalism, you, you get it so you get become so ingrained. It, like I, I look at people's tweets and I'm like, I, I they must, misspelled I email. Edit that. <laughs> <laughs> How do I go in and change that to web space? Site I'm afraid they didn't w. lowercase site. I, I'm surprised, especially on the internet. Wait a minute, the it, web is uppercase. Web is it's it's web space. It's a guy. Site. His name's Web. Uh, his name's Web. The web is a proper <laughs> noun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You too? But no, no we, they you too? We, we, we undercase it now. AP changed it. Bizarre. <sighs> See, this is what I love about doing audio. Well, the, so this, yes. this We can decide, not this. only can we decide how it's spelled, because we, we don't spell it, we can decide that's pronounced. And what to call it? <laughs> I decide how things are Zagat. pronounced all the time. Zagat, 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 Jif, Jif, Zagat. Gif. I decide, and I say that's how it's pronounced. Cool whip. And because for cool whip, because <laughs> I am often the first person to say it out loud. I win. So I, I have to. I do have to. I, I have to say, if you are a, uh, a grammar nerd, which some of us at the table Many are, of us are apparently. the Times has a great site. It's um, it's called. Uh, it's by Phil Corbett. It's um, if you look up the the Times uh, grammar blog, and what he does is it's called After Deadline, and he goes through every day um, and posts uh, usages of words that were incorrect or correct. And, and Wait, this and, guy just goes through and with a red marker on everything the internet did did, did that. No, it did, so it actually goes back to. It, um, uh, and I'm done with my New York. Times history after this. It goes back a long time ago, and they were called the Greenies. And every day you would walk into the newsroom, there'd be a pile of these green stacks of papers. And there was this guy whose job it was to read the New York Times and find all the mistakes and write them all down on the Greenies, and they would get handed out to the Well, look, here they apparently have misspelled ad nauseum. Uh, mm. E-mails. The Argentinian. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Marseille is not pluralized. Mm -hmm. So this is all content just Just on, within the New York Times. Yeah, account. okay. The Argentine, not Argentinian, stylist. A go denouncing in Twitter postings. Oh. oh. These are the kind of things journalists debate every day. Yes. Isn't this sad? <laughs> you know, it's better than thinking about the bitter, sad I mean, I don't life know. I guess, that we lead. It's I guess beautiful, it's, though, Look, it's, somebody's got to do no, it. No, I love I'm it. I'm just glad it's not I us. love it. It's, we, you know what? It's a, it's, look, everybody here is, and we're going to talk about this art in a second, but everybody here is a nerd. And this is the ultimate in nerddom, is, is a great passion for uh, a specific thing in great deep depth. That's what makes a nerd. And whether it's action figures or grammar, and I love that. That's what we celebrate. You here. should at some point, if he's ever in town, is have Jesse Scheidlauer on your show. Deal. He's the editor in chief of the Oxford Dictionary. And wow. mm. genius. Like he's the greatest, nicest guy. I have the full forty volumes in my office. Oh really? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right, you do. The I love versions. the OED. I have the full deal. I Hard just, cover. I just tweeted about this debate, and now people are daring me to mention words on Go the show. Go ahead. Say a word. Two words. The two words, I have Nian Cat and I have sausage. And that's the <laughs> words I was dared to talk about. Wait, you have to use those in a sentence? In a sentence. Well, I, I guess oh, we can talk about Wait a minute. You see, you missed a bet, Ben. You yeah. should have subtly oh, I know. snuck I, them I'm in. not a subtle person. Look at this. There's a trending, trending, I mean, I don't even know if we want to say <laughs> no, no, no. Who, who they are. Is, we're aware is that a known them. thing? We're, we're is, aware of them. Whoa. <laughs> They're going to get a letter from that same Yeah, they're going to Google. <laughs> We're going to send Arrington over with a pipe wrench. Yeah. <laughs>
So Nick wrote a great article a couple of days ago that I thought was that this study is from Bitly, Hillary Mason. Hillary Mason. Hillary's amazing. Genius. Yes. Oh, this is a great. Um, I like this because it confirmed what intuitively I think we all thought and noticed. Actually, I did not think this was intuitive. Would you explain these uh, results, Nick? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so Hillary Mason, who is the lead scientist at Bitly and probably has bigger brains than all of us put oh, together, God, yes. um, did a study where she took a, a thousand uh, of the top links that are shared on Bitly, and most links are shared on Bitly now. Um, and um, and she looked at the lifespan of the links, and uh, the an average lifespan of, of actually of a, of a regular link is around three hours or so. Three but hours. But if it's a breaking news story, a link only lasts for about five minutes. Before what do you mean? Saying last? Keep, keep in mind, they're saying the the half life of the it, half. which means like half of it, of all the links it's ever going to get have already happened. Correct. Clicks. After three hours. After, yes. Five minutes. So that long tail thing doesn't really. Is it really clicks apply. or appearances? Clicks. So if you post a link somewhere, is this true of a news article as well as uh, well, Twitter? It's, so it's Anywhere. the same. It's the Anywhere. same theory with with everything except YouTube. But we'll get to that. Um, where you have the spike and then it lasts for the half life of a certain period of time and then it falls off um, indefinitely. So you don't get a you don't get a rebirth. In general, a link that's published somewhere yes. will get half of all the clicks it's ever going to get in the first three hours. Correct. Um, but and if it's, it's news related, it'll get half the clicks it's ever going to get in the first five, five minutes. minutes. That's what surprised wow. me. Five minutes. So um, what's interesting though is is it's different on different sites. So Twitter, uh, the average, the half life is two and a half, two point eight hours. Little less. Um, Facebook is three point two hours. A little more. And email and instant messengers are three point four hours. So if you if you want a link to last a little longer, you'll get an extra twenty four minutes if you post it to Facebook. Do you think that works? Well, I mean, like, that's a strategy? That's, that could be a strategy. I mean, it definitely is. Uh, in fact, after the, the research indicates that, uh, the, and I remember O Doctor, o, Owen J.J. Stone was talking about this research about Facebook anyway, uh, like a year ago, and that's when I finally started working on my Facebook presence because, number one, of course, they've got, you know, we learned that finally there's 100 million uh, Twitter follow users out there, but there's 400 million on Facebook. And, uh, you know, so I started working on the Facebook for that exact reason because they will go back and they'll mine because people on Facebook are constantly looking for even old stuff they just want new content mm. i Correct. wonder what google plus uh, is i would that's a really good that's a good but question I don't, I don't think that this is surprising i mean i think it's great to have numbers attached to it but if you think about it i mean twitter i would actually expect twitter to be shorter because it's a right. constant unfiltered stream facebook right. on the other hand gives it, some weight to it right. i think nick was mentioning youtube was the longest but that makes sense because hours. a link that's shared on youtube it's not really the same as sharing a link as a status message on somewhere else so it would probably be a link shared in the context of a video and a video has a longer shelf life and people return yeah. to that again so yeah. I, I don't think that this is particularly surprising i think it probably tells you that if you're in a medium like, say, email, where you're expected to kind of come back after a few hours and read all of it, you have a better chance mm -hmm. of getting someone getting to it. On Facebook, like where they do a little more filtering, if it's interesting, it'll stay at the top. On Twitter, it goes, keeps going, it keeps scrolling by, so you're not going to see it. You don't think it's uh, five minutes is surprising, though? That's awfully short, boy. Well, because I think well, the reason you know, the is, is because it's because there's so much, there's like, so many links that yeah. 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 If it's news, that means... Where is the earthquake? Correct. And then the thing is, like, you know, what... I, but I, I do agree. I think, but even even so, like I still think five minutes is pretty pretty amazing considering. I mean, this is a Washington Post link that she's referencing. You right, know, but, but keep in five mind, minutes later, it's done. It's, it's, it's not saying that the story goes away. It's saying no, that that it's, particular link. So, for example, we could both be linking to the same story. Correct. Okay, but but let's say. Leo looks at his feed. Five minutes ago, Brian said something about an earthquake. One second ago, Nick says something about the earthquake. He's going to click your your link, the most recent one. Correct. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same article is what I'm saying. I'm saying the article doesn't No, it's, it's no. actually different articles, I think, at that point, because yeah. there's so much content flowing through and there's so and many I think retweets Bitly and links. makes and... them more canonical. I'm going to wrap this up with a pledge, uh, a, a plea, uh, to help Kentucky get a Super Bowl ad. Huh? Uh huh? It's a kick-ass Commonwealth since 1792. Is this? Wait. Oh, this is a Kickstarter pitch. Hey, y'all. I'm Griffin Van Meter. And I'm Wit. Tyler. This is our buddy Kent Carmichael. Who We're couldn't all be there apparently. Proud Kentuckians. And we're here to tell you Kentucky's an awesome state. They want Kentucky and its to raise three and a half million dollars to we buy a Super Bowl happened. ad for Kentucky. First fried chicken. So far they've raised twenty nine thousand. Why do they want this? They love Kentucky. Yes, Kentucky's Isn't that awesome. Obvious? We As we but who watches the <laughs> Drink Super our whiskey. Bowl ads during the Super Bowl? Aren't they all watched on YouTube afterwards? It was fine. Whatever. I watch the Super Bowl ads. I love so those. So you're saying uh, well, I, mean, I watch them. I just don't watch them on the television. Right, but you still have to pay three and a half million dollars to become a Super Bowl ad that somebody will watch on YouTube. Is a beautiful man. So you're saying that maybe they could. Man again. We nurture beauty with Loretta Lynn. Is there is there this much latent desire for for Kentucky branding? 
In uh, apparently uh, 180 here people here believe. Here. Anyone here from Kentucky? <laughs> You know, we applied to Kickstarter for uh, support in our uh, studio project, and they declined us. Why? <laughs> but they have approved this kick-ass Super Bowl commercial. Wait, why well, they they, well, keep in mind, this is also... They decline people? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, all the time. Right? This is exa as kooky as this thing is, this is exactly the type of thing that Kickstarter lo loves to promote. They love to see a few guys with a kooky idea who want, you know, who could, that can only happen if everyone chips in a few so bucks. So you were too established for them. Yeah, I, I would think, say... I think that that was the thing, yeah. is that we weren't... Um, so, and I don't mind. That's fine. We raised actually a couple hundred thousand by selling these bricks. bricks. And that worked quite well, I thought. So, you guys sell any bricks for sale? Yeah, we do. If you'd like to go to bricks.twit.tv, it's actually, I think we're going to discontinue them pretty soon, in the next no. week or so. Yeah. So, can, yeah. can people still buy, like, commemorative faux bricks so no. they can feel like they? No. So you better it's, move it's people. It's now Buy yourself never. a brick. Go to brick.twit.tv. Bricks. After that, that, you're selling pipe wrenches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to break the bricks? <laughs> no. Actually, but, you know, I, I shouldn't say we'll never do it again because who knows? Maybe we will need money for that legal defense fund. <laughs> there you go. And, and at that point, uh, we might have Empty, to go back. Empty, no bricks order. Did I just say, though, that Kickstarter uh, is... Like fantastic! It's done, I love Kickstarter. Done oh, so much, like helped amazing. so many little projects. Like it's it's just fantastic. Have you uh, paid for a brick a, a Kickstarter project? Have I paid for a brick? Oh no, no a, a brick a Kickstarter. I mean, I mean, yeah, I've, I've donated. What's your to favorite Kickstarter? I did Diaspora you, right in the beginning. Gave him a hundred bucks. I, for some reason, was I love the money. one in in uh, Michigan. They they were trying to raise money for a statue of RoboCop. There you go. In Detroit. Downtown in Detroit, Detroit. Yeah. What's it is such an awesome way to the bizarre projects that you just never would have thought of. And we featured a few of them on an SFW. We had uh, the original Mace from the Ewok Adventure. By the way, I just want to, to point out they did raise enough money for that statue of Robocop. They are going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Life is now complete in Detroit. <laughs> now to build a real Robocop. <laughs> Liz, have you ever uh, paid for a Kickstarter project? Have you given it Actually, money? a friend of mine just raised money to make a documentary about toilet papering houses. Yeah. I saw that. That's a friend of yours? Yes. That's so cool. <laughs> Did she do it yet? Uh, he, yeah. He, um, he just finished. Got, he met his goal, so he got, he got the money. I think that. 32 I years of toilet papered houses. $30,000 is uh, enough to make a movie. And, but and by the way, the best name ever, Rolled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. But, so, but... But? I think it might not be a documentary. <laughs> you mean like just an excuse to go toilet paper houses? <laughs> It'll, it, they're just buying toilet paper. How <laughs> how many toilet how many rolls of toilet paper can thirty four thousand one hundred thirty three dollars buy? Do you think he's going to go out in toilet paper houses for this documentary? No, I think it's more like um, uh, he's going to get thirteen a year olds to do it for him. Clef? It's, a, it's, it's, it's more. A, it's, I don't know. To lose the track and I. To see. What's your favorite Kickstarter project? Uh, you know what, buddy of the show, Brett Rounceville made his lifelong dream come true. He's actually written a comic book. If you do uh, Brett Rounceville, uh, well, you, you know him as the Am Trekker, but he. Um, uh, got six thousand dollars to make the first episode of a comic that he's wanted to tell forever, and it's like uh, it was almost like a religious experience for him. It was one of the greatest things that ever happened. Uh, how do you spell Ranceville? Ranceville, R O U N S A V I L L E, like it's a uh, <laughs> Ranceville. I don't know. He got funded a while ago, so it might not even it be might, up might there. Be gone. Do they keep the old ones? They should have a hall of fame of all they the funded winners. They do keep the old ones, ones. absolutely. How about you, Nick? You ever uh, buy a? Uh Kickstarter project? Kickstarter project? Yes, uh, the, the vibrator was very interesting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dare I ask? No, yeah. actually, they pitched me about writing, and I couldn't because it was the New York Times. But it was actually a really interesting project. <laughs> but I did purchase a watch, the Apple... Um, that was uh, a very yeah. successful was one, wasn't it? There's some really one. great, like, camera doohickeys and devices. <clears throat> There's some great camera stuff. There was a project that came out of some ITP students at NYU where I was a professor for a little while, and um, they did something with the iPhone camera, this little stand that... Um, it was a little plastic thing. You right. Stuck, oh, right, yeah. Right, right, so right. good. Fantastic. Um, uh, there's some great. I think Kickstarter is a fantastic. fantastic the uh, the chat room is howling for me to mention uh, Get Set Go. That recently they got funded live on NSFW the other so, day. They, well, thanks they to you a, guys. Yeah, Get Set Go, a fantastic band. They actually wrote our uh, as a thank you for 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 uh, them funding them. They wrote our end song for NSFW now. Wow. So this is uh, so this is uh, an indie rock band that that just wanted to make an album. They're like pretty pleased. They I'm seeing on. this a lot on Kickstarter. I think that's What's great. That? The music. Well, people that publish books, it's great. Books, documentaries. Yeah, I think <clears> this is really neat. So the uh, it was called the the Glyph iPhone for Tripod Mountain Stand. Mm, yeah. You know, and uh, great. the great thing about the Glyph, it seems like you're learning what really works. It's not only how good your idea is, it's how quaint your storytelling capability is. Correct. And and if you look at the for the Glyph especially, it's almost like you're looking at a Wes Anderson trailer for something. Hmm. 
I can't find GLIF? it. GLIF? GLIF. I think there are a few com more than there a few go. companies who, yeah, like, who have already designed it and they just want, they want to sell a bunch of them? Well, I interviewed the guys who did the iPhone watch, and um, uh, he said that they were just sitting, they, they work with Nike and Xbox, that, you know, it's a big product design. They're a real company. But they said that they thought about this idea, and they thought, hey, well, this would be fun, let's just do it as a little side project and not right. put any money into it and see if people are interested. And next thing there, they almost got a million dollars. Wow. So, I yeah, remember the glyph, actually. Look up one called Capture Camera Clip System, uh, and look at the ratio of what they wanted to what they got. That's the other oh, thing is wow. that it can go over oh, yeah. uh, the amount of uh, yeah, that money that you lot. asked for. They were asking. They were th for 10000 yeah. They got 364 and, and it's just a guy Thousand. making like a clip so you can put your camera on your belt. That's amazing. And it's been, it's been a launch pad for a good number of startups. I remember talking to one um, Accelerate Labs startup called Joystickers that started as a Kickstarter project to like create a paintbrush for, your, for iPads. Hmm. So the other thing I like about Kickstarter is we've talked about the democratization of, of fame thanks to the internet. You can all be a middle class rock star, but now you could be a middle class um, uh, startup uh, entrepreneur, uh, uh, venture capitalist, yeah. right? I mean, you get all the thrill, you get to feel ownership of the project, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's really insane. That's fantastic. Uh, we I, should start a Kickstarter right now. What do you guys think? What should we do? Let's Peanut buy sprints. Chat room. <laughs> Sprint, put square M&M's. <laughs> square like, peanut uh, M&M's. With whiskey inside. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see a couple of Tastes lawsuits like coming our way. Hmm. It's got to be a good one. Come on, chat. Chat room's amazing with this stuff. But you know what? We'll reserve this for NSFW because this is what you do best is crowdsource bizarre that's exactly yeah. that. I, I, in fact, I think that's going to be our new subtitle. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you would like to watch NSFW, how would you do that? Tuesday nights live is when to check us out. And, of course, you can subscribe at iTunes. I think we're on the front page for two more days. And uh, then, of course, uh, also Scam School. And you know what? You know what doesn't get enough credit? What doesn't get enough credit? Frame rate. Frame rate. Every Tuesday with, with Tom Merritt. We're talking about Great if you're somebody show. who's passionate about cutting the cord, about watching what you want, when you want it, whether it's TV, whether it's video, whether it's the web, uh, you should definitely be checking out Frame Rate. Or is your um, is your uh, um, fantasy movie league? We, we just wrapped up the summer. Who won uh, that? Oh my gosh, Sarah Lane just slaughtered us by by 150 million dollars. <laughs> she picked. So you you would buy a movie based on what you think its gross will yeah, be at the box office. Exactly. It's like uh, it's like um, summer fantasy football. Only you right. buy movies, and we enjoyed it so much. We're going to have a, a shorter winter movie league as well. Probably coming up next month. We'll go ahead and do that. That's this awesome. sounds fun. I got to do this. Doesn't this sound like fun? Yeah, it does. And it's been fun watching these guys. And Sarah, she got a couple of really big movies. Oh my That's gosh, what... yeah. She nabbed Harry Potter for like 30 bucks, and she got um, yeah. I forget the other big win that she got. Really good idea, I think. Frame rate is on twit.tv on Tuesdays, right after the ham show. Oh, no, right NSFW before. is yeah, right yeah. after the ham show. Frame rates were before. It's about the worst culture clash you could imagine. <laughs> they get along nice. Like, it was fun hanging out with the ham radio guys at I the party. That was, that was really cool. That was really cute. They're, they're talking, and I'm serious. I, will. I like get that young license. man, Brian Brushwood. <laughs> we could use his hair as an antenna. <laughs> I knew you were going to go there. <laughs> Of course I was. Liz, so nice to have you. Liz Gaines is at allthingsd.com. Really great to uh, finally get you on the show. Come back. Dot please com. do it again. Thank you. You too, Ben Parr from Mashable. What's your title at Mashable? Editor at large. Oh, Why at large? That's a good, that's a good title. That means Where, you can cover anything you want. Pretty much. Yeah. Why, is, why at large? Uh, Are you it, like out and about or? Yeah. <laughs> Are you out and about? Uh, it's not, <laughs> it's, it, 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 it's, it's, the it's the title they give you. It's like, just, just go cover you have everything. No, por no portfolio. In other cover words. everything. Right, right. So I, 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 I may be mixing you up with somebody else, but I remember when the Arrington stuff broke and you were just like, this is really boring and annoying and esoteric. Was that, was that you that said something I, along those I, lines? I try not to talk much about that, so probably not me. Okay. <laughs> But you were thinking You it. were thinking that. I, I, I think the, the only thing I think is that all these power struggles in the end distract us from the more important issues of the day. Like right. consumer issues. Like 8 megapixel sushi. Yes. <laughs> now that's important. Nick Bilton um, is, I think, one of the most interesting writers uh, at the New York Times Bits blog. At the, uh, at the Bits blog? At the Bits blog. Not just at the New York Times in general? No, not at the New York Times in general. <laughs> I think David Polk's so much more interesting than you. No, of course you're the most interesting guy writing for the Times. Thank you so much. And I, uh, and I read <laughs> you Christoph? religiously. Nothing. Thank you Nothing. very much. I'm going to be listening to you religiously as I drive down to L.A. Ah, Absolutely. nice. Do you have a Do you podcast? Do to sign your arm if you get He's the audio book? Do you have the book? Oh, you're going to listen to the book? I'm going to listen to the book. Good nice. man. Good, good man. man. It is a good book. Hey, don't uh, forget about, about the week ahead. <laughs> and uh, in a moment... <laughs> 
I we had will to slip that in somewhere. Thank Sorry. you. No, I completely <laughs> forgot. You Wait, should. Do you guys name? The, you name the show at the end, right? Yeah, we it's haven't figured out a name yet. Uh, Think about your names while we check in with Tom Merritt, sushi. who does our na daily news show, Tech News Today, every uh, Monday through Friday, two thirty Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's a good one. That's a good one. Tom, what's coming up in the week ahead? Hey, thanks, Leo. Coming up in the week ahead, some of the stories we'll be looking at at Tech News Today. Besides the Rugby World Cup, Star Wars Blu-ray ships to the world everywhere but North America starting Monday, September 12th. On Tuesday, September 13th, two big developers' conferences kick off. Microsoft Build starts in the Anaheim Convention Center. We're going to hear a lot about Windows 8 and probably some stuff about Mango as well. Also, the Intel Developers Forum kicks off that same day at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. And Tuesday, September 13th is the 26th anniversary of Super Mario Brothers. Coming up on Thursday, September 15th, the Netherlands will judge whether the Samsung Galaxy Tab infringes on Apple's community design. Radio Shack changes from a T-Mobile shop to a Verizon shop, and Amazon launches Amazon.es in Spain. Friday, September 16th, North America gets the Star Wars Blu-ray edition. No! The 30th Annual <laughs> TAPR Digital Communications Conference kicks off in Baltimore. All you hams are going to like that. And Saturday, September 17th, Adbusters has called for people to occupy Wall Street oh in protest, and My Great Fest kicks off at the Old Truman Brewery in London. That's a few of the stories we'll be looking at in the week ahead. Back to you, Leah. Yeah, all right. Thank you very much, Tom Merritt. Again, TNT every Monday through Friday, 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern at Live. I don't have to say live anymore. You can still go to live.twit.tv, but we've got the live video at twit.tv, our new website as well. Nick, Brian, Liz, Ben, great to have you all. Thank you all for joining us. Leo, thanks for having us. Make sure you tune in every Sunday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, uh, 2200 UTC for... Uh, a live version of Twitter, you can always get it after the fact because we record it. <laughs> yeah, I think no. we recorded it. I As a we courtesy it. to you. <laughs> As a courtesy. We gotta redo this. To you, the user. No recording? Okay, we'll start over. Ready? In three, <laughs> two, another twit <laughs> is in the can. Bye bye. Yay! Woo! This is amazing. I got a well, riddle for you. Go ahead. Uh, this is one that's coming in from an upcoming uh, Scam School episode. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to ask, uh, chat room is probably, there's going to be cheaters in the chat room, right? So, so Don't look at look the chat at room. The chat room. Uh, this is an old Martin Gardner riddle. I love Martin Gardner from Scientific American. That's correct. Mathematical. Uh, I got to meet him before he died. Really? Like 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 a year before he died. Wow. Like two wow. minutes before he died. What? No. Uh, that's. <laughs> did you catch his Did you catch his breath like Henry Ford's son did in Thomas right. Edison? No. Uh, okay. So here's here's the riddle. Man returns home from the hardware store, and his wife says, "Did you get him?" And he says, yep, I got 500 for $6. Wow. And then she says, $6, that's not bad. It's only $2 a piece. What did he buy? Man comes home from the hardware store. He got 500 for I got $6. for $6. That's only $2 a piece. Yeah, she said, that's not bad. It's only $2 a so piece. So three of something makes 500 That's right. Chickens. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you bought a chicken from a hardware store? M&Ms. I don't know. That's a good question. Well, I'm going to post the answer on my Google Plus oh. at gplus.to slash Schwood. You don't have a guess? I, I wasn't able to solve this one. I gave up on it. <clears throat> His mother was the doctor. No. <laughs> <laughs>